but that they will withhold judgment on it. You can support FPP Radio by joining the Fans Program. Fans are friends, allies, and numeri supporters. Fans help FPP afford to produce more original content. You can join the Fans Program for as little as $3 per month or any amount of Bitcoin per month thanks to the recurring payment options provided by Coinbase. To learn more or to join the Fans Program, visit fans.fppradio.com. UPI reports a man who escaped from a North Carolina prison in 1972 called the authorities in Kentucky to turn himself in and says he wants to make this right. Franklin County Sheriff Pat Melton said a man using the name Clarence David Moore called deputies Monday to turn himself in and investigators determined he was the man who escaped from the former Polk Youth Institute in Butner, North Carolina under the name David Edward Moore in 1972. Melton quoted Moore as saying to authorities, I need to make this right and get through this. Melton said Moore, who was wheeled out of a house in a stretcher Monday, was taken to Frankfurt Regional Medical Center for examination and will later be transferred to the Franklin County Jail. Moore, who was convicted of larceny and had been scheduled for release from prison in 1978, told authorities he was in a car accident in 2009 in Franklin County, but he avoided being recaptured because he used a false name and did not have any identification on him when he spoke to police. Melton said deputies obtained a contempt of court warrant stemming from the crash after Moore revealed his identity. Moore was on the loose for a total of 15,654 days between his escape and his call to authorities. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports the Drug Enforcement Administration's chief will step down within weeks, according to the Obama administration on Tuesday, as a congressional panel planned to examine whether DEA agents divulge secrets at sex parties that Colombian drug lords may have staged. Michelle Leonhardt will leave as DEA administrator in mid-May, said the statement from the Justice Department, which contains the DEA and other major law enforcement agencies. Attorney General Eric Holder said in a statement, I want to express my appreciation to Michelle, not not only for her leadership of the DEA since 2007, but also for her 35 years of extraordinary service to the DEA. Leonhardt was grilled in a congressional hearing last week about the parties attended by prostitutes, which took place in Colombia between 2001 and 2005. U.S. officials said the DEA did not investigate the parties until last year. The Justice Department did not give a reason for Leonhardt's decision to retire. A DEA spokesman could not immediately be reached for comment. A spokeswoman for the Republican a majority of the House of Representatives Committee on Oversight and Government Reform said the panel's leaks inquiry would also examine the culture and leadership of the DEA and other investigative agencies. Leonhardt told the panel there was no evidence that sensitive information had been leaked, but also acknowledged that it was absolutely possible that information could have been compromised. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. While waiting to interview for a web consultant position with local marketing firm Bizco, applicant Ryan Ehrlich told Onion reporters he wasn't entirely sure he was dynamic enough for his prospective employer. When I first saw that the agency was looking for a leader willing to contribute as a valued member of the team, I thought it was the perfect fit. But the more I think about it, the less I'm sure I'm actually an energetic self-starter. I mean, I think I'm a versatile, independent thinker, but Honestly, how do you even know for sure? Ehrlich, who found Bisco's online job posting earlier this week, went on to express doubts that he truly possesses the forward-thinking instincts and next-generation idea assets required to work with the fast-paced marketing firm's team of self-starters. Can I reimagine a brand for a digital landscape? Sure. But do I really have the energy, skills, enthusiasm, and passion to be a part of this dynamic, growth-oriented company? I just don't know. Oh, God. Who am I kidding? There's there's no way I'm on the cutting edge. This is the Onion News Network.
This is Free Talk Live. You are welcome to join us here toll-free. 855-450-FREE is the number. Joining you in studio tonight, it's Ian. Cantwell. And Mark. And you may join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features you'll find there. Uh, We give them away. You can actually create the content as well. So what you see on the front page was put there by listeners like you. And uh, usually, in some cases, leads to us talking about those things because it's voted on by you as well. So go and get interactive at freetalklive.com as we jump right into your calls. By the way, we're on Skype as well. The Skype username here is lrn.fm, and that's where we're going to start tonight with Uber George in D.C. Hello, George. Hey, guys. Uh, I just wanted to call because I I listened to last night's episode, and um, Cantwell was talking about how and like it was never a good idea for nations to send their women to war, except that the Soviet Union treated women the exact same way as men did during the war. It, um, there are several units that they used against the Nazis, for example, but it's pretty much they had the same um, issue with the guys. There was like a bomber group, for example, called the Noctex, and they would fly bomber planes over the Nazi territories, they cut their engines and then dive bomb them while they were sleeping. And stuff like that. Suicide and, mission? Uh, is that what you're talking no, about? No, no, it's not suicide. Oh, dive bombing. bombing. Okay. Dive bombing, yeah. They would close it, glide in and then drop the bombs and then tear out of there before the Nazis even knew what they were doing. In fact, the, um, the best, one of the best snipers in hi- history was not a uh, man, and it was not Chris Kyle. It was this woman named Ludmilla, Ludmilla Pavlichenko. Um, she ki- Chris Kyle only killed like 160 um, so called enemies. <laughs> which included women and children, where Lamilla, she killed 309 Nazis, including 36 enemy snipers. <laughs> there, so It's a pretty good up. trick to go kill in a, another sniper. <clears throat> yeah. So I was going to say, like, yeah, women can do pretty good in war, too, right there, and the Soviets proved that. Well, I, I would imagine, so I'm looking at uh, uh, an article here on, uh, this is just the Wikipedia of Soviet women in World War II. I mean, it says that most of them were actually in medical units. There were, though, uh, 800,000 women who served in uh, Soviet armed forces during the war. Nearly 200,000 uh, were decorated, and 89 eventually received the Soviet Union's highest award, the Hero of the Soviet Union. Uh, some served as pilots, snipers, machine gunners, tank crews, uh, members and partisans, as well as in auxiliary roles. Uh, four hundred eight hundred thousand is nearly the size of the lot army. Of the people, <laughs> yeah. So, well, yeah, again, most of them seem to have served in in medical roles, but I mean, medical it does role. seem that they put some into combat roles. I, I would say, though, I mean, you don't want. I don't think it's it's a good idea for society to to generally put uh, women and men in equal roles in combat situations, because as I as I was explaining last night, just the sociobiology of it is that if you have a bunch of you know if the, if even most of the men of the society uh, end up dead in a war. Uh, the ones that are left over can uh, just, biologically speaking, they can go around and impregnate a whole lot of women, which is why even though you had all of these guys die uh, in these wars, that within a generation your population numbers got more or less back to normal, whereas women, uh, they can't go out and impregnate a whole bunch of men. You understand? They've got to hold a baby. Yeah. It's got to take a while. It's a, there's a great amount of effort that goes into raising the child and whatnot. And so uh, I still would say I understand that people have uh, – societies have uh, put women into combat roles in, in wars before, and I'm not entirely surprised by that. But it will would still seem to be that the vast majority of your, your combat fighters uh, in Russia or anybody anywhere else are going to be men, and I don't, I don't think that it should be any other way. Yeah. I guess I could, should just preface that this is Russia, after all, and their women are probably as strong as most <laughs> men around the world in other countries Thanks anyway. for the call, George. I mean, there's one woman, I was just want to say there's yeah. one woman, for example, that when it comes to handling coke, um, I'll, I'll do anyone, even in New England, like she was skin, she was swimming under naked under the ice at one point. Her name like Natalia Avsinko. She literally swam under an ice lake for like several minutes out right there just, just to prove that she could do it. And to she prove she's had frigid. Had Thanks yeah. for the call, George. <laughs> 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. I don't even know what to go with this. <laughs> well, I mean, it should be up to the market to decide these things, right? And, but it's not, unfortunately, in that uh, if the market sh- uh, were to provide defensive services rather than these government-centralized militaries that we have today, then maybe there would be like a 
a real badass team of uh, lady mercenaries or something like that. I wouldn't be surprised to find out that there are some badass teams of lady mercenaries now. I yeah. mean, even even in the government apparatus, I imagine they go in and they're like, you know, hot and sexy and get in, you know, kill get Bill. to different places <laughs> and then they go in and they kill everybody. Like, I'm not surprised to find out that that, that happens. Yeah. But I'm just talking about like, you, if you look at sociobiology, right? I mean, men, men uh, have a tendency to be more physically aggressive than women do. They have more upper body strength. And of course, if, as, as I said, I mean, just the, the the breeding cycle of it all. If you send your women out to, to do your fighting as a society, and then uh, you are left with a bunch of men and like two women in the society, That's a problem. this creates a pretty yeah. serious problem. If you have a farm and you have a bunch of female cows and you only need one bull, why? Because the one <laughs> bull can do all of the needing that you need for the breeding, right? You don't need to have 10 bulls and one female. It's just, he does get rather protective, though. Hmm? He does get rather protective. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he does, but you know, you give him 12 mates and eventually he's like, you can have one or two, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what about apes, though, Mark? You and I had a story uh, tonight sort of separately, but we brought it in, t- in together here about uh, apes and possibly showing up in court. Well, I'd say as far as sexuality goes, apes, uh, they, they span the gamut from uh, bonobos. Uh, they basically do it with everybody and, uh, you know, to, uh, I believe. My kind of ape. Yeah, I believe we're talking about with uh, uh, with gorillas. You probably shouldn't uh, pay that much attention to me, but I think it's sort of one guy um, sort of controlling the group. And anyway, there's a story that's coming out of, I've got it off of the Wall Street Journal's blog. This is New York Supreme Court. Yeah, and the reason is is because there have been a lot of stories that have sort of misquoted what this is about. All right. Um, and, and by the way, there's a certain amount of backtracking on the part of the – is it the New York Supreme Court or is it the New York Circuit Court of Appeals? Uh, well, there is a Supreme Court Justice Barbara Jaffe okay, that's involved it. in this. Uh, here from WallStreetJournal.com, a New York judge has ordered the state to justify why two chimpanzees allegedly kept at a Long Island public university and used as research subjects shouldn't be transferred to an animal sanctuary in South Florida. The animal rights advocates representing the animals hailed the judge's decision late Monday to grant a hearing early next month as a water and it was it was a, listed as a habeas corpus hearing. Um, as a watershed moment for their long and controversial effort to persuade courts to confer human rights on primates. Uh, The court on Tuesday was quick to downplay the implications of the... This is Tuesday. Remember, the order was issued Monday. Mm -hmm. Downplay the implications of the legal development. A spokesman for the state court system said that New York Supreme Court Justice Barbara Jaffe did not grant a writ of habeas corpus, even though that's what was reported, a centuries-old right to challenge the legality of one's detention before a court, the judge, according to the spokesman, mistakenly labeled her order a writ of habeas corpus. It was a mistake. <laughs> Saying that she had only granted the hearing to discuss the legal issues raised by non-human rights by the non-human rights project. Judge uh, Jaffe on Tuesday amended her initial order, striking out the words, striking the words habeas corpus from the document. So huh. um, basically the idea here is, is that um, earlier on in this, is this has been about whether or not uh, we're talking about non-human persons here. Are we are chimpanzees and they list elephants? A non-human person. What a strange legalistic legal land term that sounds. Well, like. I, I I could almost say that non-human person makes sense when we're talking about like a corporation. Like a corporation is a person right. for the purpose of a court. But now we're talking about. A new definition of person. That we're it would we're talking about granting personhood animal. to non-human animals. Yes, and so we're talking about uh, apparently uh, this is a um, from let's see the non-human rights project is quoted here. We have scientific evidence to prove in a court of law that elephants, great apes, whales, and dolphins are autonomous beings and deserve the right to bodily liberty. And I find this to be a very interesting topic. I think so it's because I find it infuriating. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. I, I I will I will I will get you on this one because I spent a lot of time on it. Um, let me go ahead and uh, make my ding, case. Ding 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 ding. <laughs> Do you believe in stupid people and smart people? Do you think that there that there's a difference in, in human intelligence? Yes. Do you think that that difference in intelligence may correlate in great apes, like there are smart apes and stupid apes? I don't care. <laughs> uh oh, Mark just got got. Eight fifty five. If you if you are dumber than an ape, well, look, 
I'm still going to confer upon you certain obligations to the society around her, you that right, st- you can't have force initiated against Stand by. You. We'll come back here in a moment to elucidate further. 855-450-FREE. If you want to join us here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. Hi, Ron Paul here. Today I have an urgent message for every American who's retired or thinking about retiring soon. You see, our own government's disastrous policies have now put you, me, and everyone over the age of 50 at great risk. Sometime in the near future, we're going to have yet another financial crisis. This one won't be solved with bailouts, and it will hit seniors the hardest. I fear there will be civil unrest, a drop in stock prices, pension fund collapses, big changes to Social Security and Medicare, the erosion of personal liberties, bank and brokerage closings, and ultimately a major crisis as the U.S. dollar is rejected for almost any non-paper alternative. Don't let this happen to your retirement. Dr. Ron Paul strongly believes when the next crisis hits, there will be no warning and the government won't save you. Go online to www.ronpaulwarning10.com where you'll learn simple steps you can take to protect your retirement. Go to www.ronpaulwarning10.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc. As in Creative Commons. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, you've got Ian. Cantwell. 
And Mark. Get more Chris at ChristopherCantwell.com. What's the latest story, Chris Cantwell? I actually, uh, I, I haven't posted a whole lot this week. I, I did some rebranding. I, really? Uh, yeah, so uh, where it used to say Anarchist Atheist Expletive up at the top of yeah. the uh, website, it now says Anarchist Atheist Abolitionist. And I also changed, oh. yeah, I also changed the name of the, uh, the podcast. It used to be called Some Garbage Podcast, and now it is The Radical Agenda. All right, so slow down for a second here. Anarchist, atheist, abolitionist. Tell me more about this uh, decision to rebrand, because that's a major rebranding. It It is yeah. a major— Refu- Refusing to call yourself an a-hole anymore is a big deal. Well, <laughs> it, it kind of is, but it's it's an outward marketing sort of thing. The content is not changing. Uh, so the uh, idea being, I felt like sort of a moron. We, we have been up at the legislature, <laughs> and we're talking to some rather serious people, and then I hand them a business card that says a-hole on it. And they get a kick out of that sometimes. <laughs> But something tells me that they don't feel like calling me on the phone afterwards. And Mm. so, you know, if I'm going to uh, be doing certain things, I'm realizing that they're probably not the only ones who might otherwise be very interested (laughs) in what I have to say, but then see that like thing right in their face as soon as they get in contact with it and say, well, why would I take advice from an (laughs) a-hole? And so I I think it's... Couldn't they say the same thing about (laughs) anarchists? Well, yeah, but, uh, you know, how much camouflage is a guy going to use, right? So <laughs> you got to draw a line somewhere. Right. So, I mean, I've, I've, I've branded it as such for, you know, such a period of time as to, uh, you know, to, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't make a great deal of sense to get away from anything else. And fundamentally, I mean, you know, a-hole is not a core of my belief system, right? <laughs> whereas, okay. whereas anarchists certainly would be. There are plenty, plenty of people that disagree with that statement. <laughs> <laughs> and, and being an abolitionist is a core of your belief system. Well, exactly. I mean, we've we've had a few conversations recently about the button, and so mm-hmm. I uh, I the button to uh, abolish government yes. or to eliminate it, the abolition of the state, and and uh, I am uh, at the end of the day somebody who would certainly press that button. I would certainly consider that a, a core belief system thing, and so I thought that that would make sense, and then it still sort of keeps in line the the flow of what it is: anarchist, atheist. Abolitionist. Abolitionist. You know. It's yeah. still alliterative. Alliteration. Yeah, alliteration. Uh, Toll-free number tonight, if you want to join us here, is 855-450-FREE or Skype us at lrn.fm. All right, so I think that's that's good news, Chris. I'm, I'm happy to see that. I like, yeah. I like. And as we can see, I mean, I haven't toned it down yeah. much. I'm still like, you know, Mark's talking about smart to chips, just dumb softy, chips, and I'm like, I don't care, and I'm talking about and everybody knows women it. shouldn't have the right to vote last night, and that's, you know, certainly something that people would brand a hole uh, but Radical agenda. Okay, so why rebrand? Was it that the Some Garbage podcast had advanced to a level where you had, you know, mic arms in the studio and decent equipment now, and you felt like you've risen above the dumpster level? Well, that's part of it, yes. And so, like, I, I felt like a real fool. I had, like, you know, we've I've had some pretty good guests on the program. You know, mm-hmm. I've had Walter Block. I had Walter Williams, you know, and I had Walter Williams. And a lot of times when I bring a guest on, I usually tell him to come on, like, 15 minutes in. And then Walter Williams was like, all right, I'll come on at 5 o'clock sharp and i was like okay and then all right and i didn't tell walter what the name of the show was but then walter is on hold and i'm starting the show and i've got to say it's some <laughs> garbage podcast and i feel like a moron because this guy is like a, you know he's kind of a prestigious guest he's he's filling in for rush limbaugh and stuff and all i'm right. like this is not helping my branding but it's difficult too because it's like you, you say like uh you know you've built up an audience like i have and these people sort of expect certain things and people are all concerned sure. that like i'm oh you're gonna go tone it down you're gonna be one of these moderate social justice warrior pansies well, it seems to me that you are not self-deprecating in your show marketing at this point but that doesn't mean you won't self-deprecate when you're on the air right I no mean, i already do yeah. yeah i ended up doing the, for the first episode of radical agenda i ended up doing like four and a half hours and we uh there was wow. no, no shortage of that you know so who was on with you on the first episode just me and then i had a lot of callers and nice. i sort of wanted to get into I, I went into sort of you know april 19th is patriots day and then they they that was the day that the first shots were fired in lexington and concord and in the same place where that had happened then there was the martial law that that followed the boston marathon bombing on the same day and uh, so I started to sort of go into that, and the phones were just packed the entire time, and I wanted to take everybody's calls, so we went until uh, we went until like 9.30. Very cool. That was kind of like the first episode of Free Talk Live a uh, long time ago, back in 2002, when we first uh, went into the studio. Mark, you were there for this, uh, and we were at a local radio station in Sarasota, Florida. 
we actually stayed on later than we'd originally intended yeah. to stay on because the show was going so well. It was like wall to wall uh, callers, and it was awesome. So good start to the new program. I'd say so. It's going to be good, and then I've got um, Raquel Oki is supposed to come uh, come to Keen pretty soon. She, I was seeing. Uh, we'll talk about that later on but yeah she's, she's gonna is. be on with me on friday we're gonna talk about a few things and i'll post that information when i get home all right cool christopher cantwell.com go and get more of chris there and now rebranded so that's very cool uh mark we we're talking about the apes and this court decision that wasn't what it seemed to be it uh had, at least they're backing off what it might have been yeah, yeah it had a habeas corpus in the title of the original judge's order However, the judge has now said, oops, I made a mistake, which people do make mistakes, uh, certainly, but well, the legal land is a much more deliberate place. Like People are, are pretty cautious with the words that they use in legal land generally. I don't know about that. But it's um, certainly possible she opened the wrong template and forgot to change something. Clearly, you can't uh, offer the same rights to chimpanzees as uh, we have today, right? So um, as, as humans have today. But wait, it's, wasn't there that, that case in Argentina? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, so we talked about this previously. Maybe you weren't on the show that night, but there was a ruling made in Argentina last year with orangutans being granted the status of non-human persons with legal rights. In India, um, dolphins and whales are also non-human persons. So this is uh, going on different places. But you can do, like, with a with a dolphin or a whale, you can kind of say, okay— you're free to go and put them in the ocean and they can swim away and whatever happens to the people. Unless they, they have drugs, at which point. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, they, and they'll die out there because they haven't had a, you know the proper training or whatever. And, okay. and you know we're all absolved of, uh, of the problems <laughs> That's involved. That's true. They now, probably will die out with there. With a chimpanzee didn't. or an orangutan, um, if I remember correctly, uh, Fossey, what's her name? The, the, the one that was out there with the... Uh, um, with the chimpanzees for so long, Jane, Jane Goodall, uh, yeah. um, she claimed that an adult male chimpanzee can lift up a VW bug, the old ones, not the new ones, over its head with one arm. Let's assume that I'm remembering this incorrectly and it's lift, a, um, lift one over its head with two arms. Mm. This animal can literally rip your arms off and jam them down your throat till you die, yes. if that's what it wishes to do. So are they going to release these animals into greater Long Island um, from this university? I sincerely hope not. I, I, think, well, I don't think it's going to be good for anybody. In if this case, the them. plan is to free Hercules and Leo from yeah. uh, alleged captivity in but New York. But just to take them to captivity in South Florida. Take them to a sanctuary called Save the Chimps, which is in Fort Pierce, Florida, uh, where they will Does be— Does it have locks? No, actually. They will spend the rest of their lives primarily on one of 13 artificial islands, so it's sort of locked by water, I oh, guess I you see. could say. Yeah, fine. A prison <laughs> by any other name. It's escape from New York. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they'll have Ape a fine island. time there. We'll come back with more here. Your thoughts. Welcome on apes and the idea of animals having rights, because there's a much larger conversation to have here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We've also got Skype. Skype username here is lrn.fm. More Free Talk Live coming up. So we decided to upgrade the look of our home. You know, improve the curve appeal. We decided to add the look of stone to the exterior. We really like the stacked stone look. Yeah, but when I checked into the price, it was ridiculous. No way could we afford it. Then a friend told me about Genstone. G-E-N-S-T-O-N-E. Genstone comes in lightweight panels made of polyurethane. They've actually engineered the hassle out of installation. No mortar, no mesh. It was easy. Even I could do it. We just screwed the panels to the wall and it looks like stone. I mean, it really looks like stone. Yeah, from the box to the wall in minutes. We love the look of our home now. And Genstone is durable, comes with a 25-year warranty, and offers additional R-value for insulation. If you want the look of stone at a price you can afford, call Genstone. At 855-955-STONE. Trust me, you'll save money. And you'll love the look. It's 855-955-7866. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck 
in the left right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213 213- Four nine three zero three zero eight. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. We are back with more Free Talk Live. Of course, we'll take your calls about whatever you would like to discuss. 855-450-FREE is the number we've been talking about Apes, chimpanzee specifically, a U.S. judge is now going to be having a hearing, as I understand it, which was originally called a habeas corpus uh, hearing. She has now stricken that after the fact, has uh, modified her order to not use those terms, saying it was uh, an error. Of course, a habeas corpus is a writ that allows people to challenge their detention. And the idea here is that Hercules and Leo, who are at a university, should be able to be released from this captivity and brought to Chimp Island, essentially, Ape Island, if you will, uh, somewhere down in Florida where hundreds of apes uh, allegedly live, 13 artificial islands, apparently. And it brings up, you know, sort of large questions about the idea of animals having rights. The people in this particular case who are obviously arguing on behalf of the apes, the Non-Human Rights Project, as they are called, are uh, very, very elated about this. They feel like just this hearing alone is a foot in the door, as they describe it. Quote, this is a big step forward to getting what we're ultimately seeking, the right to bodily liberty for chimpanzees and other cognitively complex animals. According to Natalie Prosen, the executive director, she says we got our foot in the door, and no matter what happens, that door can never be completely shut again. I hope one of them goes to play with one of these apes and it smashes their skull open. <laughs> it will definitely do that. And and so are you driving at there, Chris Cantwell, the idea that the reason why, at least from my perspective, that an ape can't have the same rights as a human being is because they will probably not necessarily respect those rights in return. The idea of rights is a reciprocal agreement between thinking people 
who you know realize that the uh, the concept of rights is something that benefits human existence that we are better for having that idea and we can respect those rights between human beings an animal that might hurt you or kill you is obviously not willing to uh, reciprocate if I wanted to think it through that far, that's probably the conclusion I'd come to. <laughs> I'm just saying that this is ridiculous. They got Guantanamo Bay is still open, and there are people going, oh, we need habeas corpus for a chimpanzee, and I can't get it. We got Ross Ulbricht in prison. We just got a conversation with a guy who got <laughs> locked up for collecting money for a charity, and these people are like, no, you can't do this as an animal because it has bodily liberties and that human person. Hang yourselves. Um, well, I mean, you know, there's probably somebody back in the time of uh, chattel slavery and in, in the antebellum south saying hey we don't want it why in the world are we trying to get freedom for black people when we could we haven't even gotten freedom for white people yet and uh i mean this is a you know it, it's a line of reasoning that doesn't necessarily uh it, it's not looking at the core issue here the core issue is do animals have rights and if so i mean do they have do they own themselves and that seems obvious can they recognize who, they're, who they are? And we know that chimpanzees and a few other animals out there can recognize themselves in mirrors. That's important. Mm -hmm. um, and Dolphins. They, yeah, dolphins and uh, I, I, like starlings or something. There's a, there's a few. It's mm. really strange. Uh, I, I don't eat any of them. Um, but it, it, pigs and dogs don't show up on that uh, list, as I recall. The... The, the question that I'm I'm left with is is if apes have if humans have rights if I believe that humans have rights and I, I don't believe that okay um, I think that rights are a function of ownership do you think that humans can own things yes okay so if you have um, ownership if you own something then you have the rights to that thing so you have a car I don't have the right to drive your car you do right and um, if I own a chimp then the Supreme Court doesn't have a right to come in and take my chimp. <laughs> That's what the government says about you. Uh, <laughs> that Canada can't come get you because they own you. You're their citizen. Um, you know, I the, the the point that I would make on that is is that some chimps are smarter than other chimps, and some humans are smarter than other humans. If we have a crossover and who's smarter than whom, then you have a real problem because uh, you know humans. If humans have rights and chimps don't have rights, then we have a situation where you know smarter beings have fewer rights than non uh, than, than dumber beings, and mm -hmm. that's a real real issue to my mind. And I I would like to see this sort of uh, you know fixed. I don't think you can can give like it's impractical to give rights to chimpanzees in today's society. You can't just release them on you know all the chimps that are in zoos everywhere. Finally, get let go on some auspicious day. Uh, uh, pretty soon, people are going to be getting destroyed in the streets. I mean, they really are going to have their heads crushed, as you were talking about, Cantwell. So uh, I think this is all very interesting. It's much easier with whales, and you just say, look, you can't have any whales. you got to let your whales go. And then, you know, you let Willie go out in the ocean, and nobody sees him die a lonely death because no pod will take him in, mm -hmm. and he can't hunt on his own. He just ends up floating someplace on, you know, 70% of the planet out in the ocean, and we never know that Willie dies because we released him. It's a circle of life. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, I can assure you that, you know, most, most house pets that are living in, uh, in America today couldn't make it out on their own. All right, so if you've got thoughts you want to share, please do 855-450-FREEZE, the toll-free number. Also, Skype username is lrn.fm, and that's where Dylan is in Ohio. Dylan, what's on your mind tonight on Free Talk Live? Hey guys, thanks for taking my call. Sure, go ahead. Uh, I wanted to talk about my ADHD and ADD and sure. ODD. Attention like deficit disorder, oppositional defiance disorder. I think that most of my uh, liberty-minded friends would probably be diagnosed with ODD, oppositional defiance disorder. We don't like to be told what to do by people in yeah. supposed uh, positions of authority. Absolutely. Like everybody in the whole world has defiance disorder no i no, think most people everybody. have enslavement disorder is actually yeah. the fundamental problem that we're dealing with but continue yeah i think uh, all the evidence is, i think all the evidence point. is to the contrary that uh, most people will obey and do as they're told but yeah it's all that and and medication like why why do they medicate people for this like who who diagnoses the people with add odd and whatnot well, the people who diagnose them are the people who've gone through state school, 
So you they've got a gone state license, right? They've gone through years of education and indoctrination, to be more specific, by state-approved teachers uh, to get a state-approved certificate to administer this state-approved curriculum of psychology or psychiatry or whatever it is we're talking about. It's there. basically brave basically new world, right? And except that, like, only a few of the people have not been uh, completely enslaved and indoctrinated to the point that they have to take Selma every day, right? In Brave New World, if any of you have seen that movie or read that book, everybody takes these pills all the time, right? Yeah. And it's like this, uh, oh, yeah. you know, thing to keep the the citizenry calm or whatever. And uh, it, it now it's like, well, you know, everybody pretty much just does what we say. So we'll just cram these pills down the throats of the, the few uh, uh, people who are uh, uh, yeah, the hanger-ons or whatever. don't want to listen to what I have to say. We'll give them pills or whatever. And then eventually, 10 years down the road, they could develop cancer or something. Well, no, I mean, they, the uh, pills can be very psychoactive, I guess you could say. They're... they're things that can change how people perceive reality. I mean, we've seen the people who have done the, the shootings, the mass shootings at these schools, for instance. A lot of them have uh, been found later on to have been on a variety of these pills that are commonly prescribed for some of the DDD order <laughs> disorder things we're talking about here. And, uh, you know, they go on murderous shooting sprees. So allegedly, obviously, there's a lot of conspiracy theories around those things. But I think that uh, there's something to that. I know that a, a, a co-host on Free Talk Live in the past used to take some kind of anti-depression medication. I don't remember what it was. It was more than one of them. And uh, after he stopped taking that medication, the massive breakouts that he had all over his back just were horrifying, lots of pimples all over his back. Those went away, and he started losing weight. So, you know, while he was on these supposedly antidepressant, uh, antidepressant medications, he was very sexually unattractive in multiple different ways and Probably was wasn't helping his depression any. Incredibly frustrated by that. Yeah. So it just made it worse. And that's just one story, right? There are a zillion of these uh, anecdotes. I've out known there. too many people who yeah. are just all like, medicated. Like when I was a child, I was on Wellbutrin for being suicidal, and it, it never helped me at all. I Apparently, you didn't kill yourself. <laughs> and then I, I got better by myself. Like, I looked at the world around me and said, hey, this isn't right. I need to change my perception. That's what you got to do, and then you change your reality that way. Thank you for the call, Dylan. I appreciate it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype as well. Skype on in at username lrn.fm. Share your thoughts here on Free Talk Live. More coming up. Retrievers, Labradors, Goldens are the main breeds that come through our door, but we'll train anything with four legs and a tail. My husband and I train hunting dogs and also have a boarding and grooming business. Our dogs, they're athletes, and we feed them very quality food. You can't get enzymes in a commercial dog food because they cook it at such a high heat, but adding Dynavite to their diet has... Every single dog in my kennel looking better than they have ever looked. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Dynavite's the bomb. We tell everybody we know about Dynavite. Just feed your dog right. Use Dynavite. If it's working, don't quit. When I get down to the bottom of my box to Dynavite, it's time to place my order. Dynavite dot com. Eight 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Wall and Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Wall and Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates. Associates, 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary, not a solicitation for legal services. 
Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. It's being held this year from July the 26th to the 31st at the Cato Institute's state-of-the-art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the country and often from around the globe, with everyone sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop thinking after they got out of school. It's for people who don't want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value liberty. You'll learn. You'll be inspired. You'll make new friends. You'll meet great people from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at cato.org. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Drop by freetalklive.com, please, and enjoy the features that we share with you there for free. But if you want to help support the show, then you can do that by shopping with us. Just go to shop.freetalklive.com. You enter Amazon through the links you'll find there. There's also some, some other links like uh, Walmart. But you enter Amazon through the links you'll find there, and Free Talk Live gets a cut of the purchase Whatever it is you're buying, I mean, maybe the latest video game or maybe something old, because I'm pretty sure it works on uh, the used items on Amazon as well. So once again, whatever you're shopping for, you can probably find it through shop.freetalklive.com, and then Free Talk Live gets a cut of the sale. Our toll-free number again is 855-450-FREE. We're talking about the concept of rights, the New York, there is a New York court that is going to be hearing a case about some chimpanzees. There is a group of activists that want to remove them from their captivity and put them into a different style of captivity, uh, more of a less uh, not moving from like a cage style captivity, perhaps to uh, an island. Although I can't say I know for sure what the current status of their keep is. The the story that I have from RT doesn't really go into that. Do you happen to know? They're at, at a university in on Long Island. Is all I can tell you. Yeah. So I would imagine they're in you know something a bit more clinical, as it were. You know. And they've probably been there their whole lives. I'm very interested to see what it might be like for them to move into one of these more, uh, you know, out in the nature kind of preserve things. But It would make for an interesting uh, nature show, actually. Set yeah. up some cameras and see what happens to the new guys in this 250-strong chimpanzee preserve. They're going to get beaten like dogs, um, <laughs> would be my guess. Uh, like, you don't just toss in some adult male into one of these situations and oh look how awful awesome this is <laughs> right like this is you know uh, humans are much better at acclimating to new people being tossed into their environment than uh, most animals are so i would think that they would have to be kept separate even though they might be kept in what we would consider aesthetically more pleasing and what for them may be um, more aesthetically pleasing too but that doesn't change the fact that they might very well be insane already like, yeah, I don't know point. how, um, you know, many of these things kind of are one of these situations where you just have to kind of say, well, there's no more of this. No more, uh, you know, experiments on the chimpanzees or whatever. All right. So uh, there used to be an activist here in Keene who had a chihuahua with her at, at all times. And uh, basically this chihuahua would not exist, I don't think, unless there was someone taking care of it. 
the, the the thing doesn't have the build for defending itself in any meaningful fashion. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe there's certain environments in which they, they exist naturally. There probably are, but uh, it seems like over at least the years they've been acclimated to there's human environments. There's no such thing as a wild chihuahua, yeah. if that's yeah. what you're asking. I, I, used to, I used to own ferrets before I moved to New Hampshire, mm-hmm. and if you if you do some study on ferrets, they have... Their DNA has changed over the course of time, right? Like they are descendants of weasels, and weasels do just fine out in the wild. Mm -hmm. But the domesticated ferret, there is no... Uh, there is no twin for it out in the wild now. I see. If you let a ferret go into the wild, people have tried to create feral ferrets in on numerous occasions where they release a, a whole idea. bunch of ferrets into some uh, you know, <laughs> wilderness environment, and they all die. I mean, they don't live yeah. more than like three days. They're just incapable of surviving. All kinds of predators just snatching them up. Even even if you put them into an environment without predators, like they won't go out and do the things that they need to do to, to survive, survive, to find Starve water, to, to, death. to to hunt, whatever. They wow. need to be taken care of. They're just incapable of doing. So no it. instinct whatsoever kicks in. For right. Them. And I've and I've made the analogy to human beings before too. I'm convinced that you know human beings as a species have been domesticated so long by the state that they're just <laughs> incapable of surviving half of them. And I and I don't care. I don't want them to. So, <laughs> um, the, yeah, I suspect that you know I would do a poor job. Like I'm good at pressing buttons, you know. Well, That's you know, I I don't think that uh, to do. I've I've used it for like the <laughs> analogy of sort of even even you know the anarchy button, right? Like some people like require the state at this point. Like they really mm. just they, they wouldn't know the first thing to do without the state ordering them around all day. And you know what? Screw them. I don't care. Right. I'm, I'm sick of the oppression of the state. And so if some people can't get along without it, screw them. It's not my problem. But I feel like they've been domesticated just like the ferret. And mm-hmm. that's the analogy I've used. And maybe that's not where we want to go with this. But in any case, I don't know that uh, chimpanzees are in the same position. Right. Like maybe they could. Maybe they couldn't. Uh, I well, just, the point Mark's making about the uh, the chimps that are in a cage, they have been to some extent domesticated in that they at the very least have been prevented from being raised by a natural order. Uh, certainly with with dolphins, I was watching one documentary about how there's this long process of education that goes on in these dolphin communities, if you will, the pods, where they take young dolphins and teach them how to be a dolphin, essentially. And it's there's a passing on of knowledge that happens over over the generations that is not going to happen in the same way to one of them that is in captivity from birth. Uh, so, you know, there's an argument that for those animals and that for other animals, like certain types, entire, uh, I don't know, subspecies, like ch- Chihuahua, for instance, or the ferret, uh, that, you know, if you believe in animal rights, wouldn't you want those animals to continue to survive? Because right now, if you l- let those loose, they're going to die. And, uh, and I would think an animal rights uh, advocate would be someone who first and foremost wants to see animals survive. No, I don't think that that necessarily is the case. I think that that... You might be right. That's the on-the-ground people, the people that are sort of philosophically have dedicated their lives to it, understand that we all live and die. Um, I mean, when, you know, somebody can't be a vegan and realistically think that they're somehow preventing death from occurring, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, every pig that has ever lived has either died or shall die in the relatively near future. So to the claim that you shouldn't eat pork doesn't stop pig deaths. What yep, it does is, is it limits pig lives. Um, it uh, it may p- prevent some level of pig suffering, but not. let's not forget that pigs in the wild and animals in the wild tend to be on the verge of starvation. You know, that's how nature works. Nature mm-hmm. keeps you on the verge of starvation, and some fall off and some, uh, you know, what we call all thrive survive. <laughs> yeah and and i don't I, I don't know that any of them necessarily uh you know thrive but you know that would be getting slightly more food than starvation would be considered thriving. i think the people who brought this case and the major purveyors of this animal rights lunacy ha- do have no interest in making life better or more abundant for animals i think they're trying to make it more difficult for human beings Share your thoughts toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. So it remains to be seen what's going to happen in this court, but it's uh, pointed out in the RT story here that it was last year, yeah, four months ago, actually, when another court in New York made a, a ruling 
that says that a chimpanzee is not legally a person and therefore not entitled to human rights. Yeah, so that's true. They made a sort of an opposite ruling as the court in Argentina did. Hap- happens all the time, though. Um, you know, these courts will reverse themselves. These lower courts uh, reverse themselves and, and that sort of thing. And uh, I think that we're going to come to... I just remember the book, the comic book. Uh, maybe maybe this is what's warped me, right? Um, our, our good friend, uh, my good friend, Scott Beezer, the guy who does uh, Big Head Press. Yeah. Uh, you can find him at bigheadpress.com. He, Good he, comics. Yeah, he drew the comic for the L. Neil Smith book, The Probability Brooch. And in mm-hmm. The Probability Brooch, there were intelligent dolphins and intelligent apes. And what they basically had was devices on them that allowed them to speak. Currently, yeah. we know that apes can speak through devices. These would just be smaller devices that would work sort of telepathically or something like that. Um I have a real problem with the idea of eating a hamburger made out of an animal that can use a computer to speak sentences. Um, at, you know, we found Coco the gorilla is a really great example. Was able to do mm. these things. Um, in in my opinion, at that point, this is the equivalent of cannibalism. Um, I you know now what does that form take in today's society? I don't know the answer to that. But if you can eat Coco, you should be able to eat somebody who's in a vegetative state. Fine, let's have autism burgers. That, fine, that, that's <laughs> we'll all I'm saying. Is, is that that makes to- more sense to me <laughs> than courts conveying upon animals the same uh, obligations that we have for human beings. It's bad enough. The whole concept of rights in human society has gotten so convoluted and nonsensical that it's bad. Barely, it's barely comprehensible what we do with human beings in this society. Mm. And rather than figure that out, they're going to be like, now we can do the chimpanzees now. <laughs> no, it's ridiculous. It's sick. Get it straightened out with human beings. And then I'm really interested to have the conversation about what Coco the chimpanzee's IQ is. <laughs> Until then, if he needs a device to tell me that it's cold outside, then I don't want to hear from him. Well, if they can't, uh, maybe this is the way to find out better what human rights are through the court system. Maybe we can look at I'm some of I'm not sure how species. this would help uh, but When you use the term animal, rights. animal in and of itself is a divisive term. Well, what we're all animals. does it mean? Right. So yeah. when you, if you want to give rights to animals, you're talking about giving rights to human animals, well, too. I don't think you can give rights. I mean, I think that you have to respect rights. I think you have to okay. acknowledge and, and believe in them and respect them in others. And I think that if it, if it came to the point, and this is a question for you, Chris Cantwell, if it came to the point where dolphins and or apes were actually able to communicate beyond cold, hot, you know, and actually get to the point of saying, yes, I would like rights and I will respect yours, then uh, would you respect theirs? In return. Not right now. No, I worry about it. We get the, the human being they straighten out first, okay? <laughs> to triage the situation. We'll come back with more 855 450 free. You can share your thoughts here on rights or whatever's on your mind. There's more coming up as well. It's Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t-shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, April 22nd, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.04 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,201 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $236. Antiwar.com reports the elected president in the post-revolution 2012 election and ousted just a year later in a military coup. Former Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi has been sentenced to 20 years in prison. Since the coup, Morsi's Freedom and Justice Party has been banned as a terrorist organization and the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood, its associated religious movement, has been sentenced to death multiple times. Human rights group Amnesty International was critical of yesterday's ruling, calling it a sham trial and a travesty of justice, demanding that Morsi be either retried or released. Lawyers for Morsi and his allies, however, say they feel like they got off easy with just 20 years and that they'd expect Morsi to be charged with incitement to murder and to have been sentenced to at least life in prison. The Obama administration, which has been reluctant to criticize the Egyptian coup, said they had reservations about the trial of Morsi, but that they will withhold judgment on it. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. You can join the FANS program for as little as $3 per month or any amount of Bitcoin per month thanks to the recurring payment options provided by Coinbase. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. UPI reports a man who escaped from a North Carolina prison in 1972 called the authorities in Kentucky to turn himself in and says he wants to make this right. Franklin County Sheriff Pat Melton said a man using the name Clarence David Moore called deputies Monday to turn himself in and investigators determined he was the man who escaped from the former Polk Youth Institute in Butner, North Carolina under the name David Edward Moore in 1972. Melton quoted Moore as saying to authorities, I need to make this right and get through this. Melton said Moore, who was wheeled out of a house in a stretcher Monday, was taken to Frankfurt Regional Medical Center for examination and will later be transferred to the Franklin County Jail. Moore, who was convicted of larceny and had been scheduled for release from prison in 1978, told authorities he was in a car accident in 2009 in Franklin County, but he avoided being recaptured because he used a false name and did not have any identification on him when he spoke to police. Melton said deputies obtained a contempt of court warrant stemming from the crash after Moore revealed his identity. Moore was on the loose for a total of 15,654 days between his escape and his call to authorities. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports the Drug Enforcement Administration's chief will step down within weeks, according to the Obama administration on Tuesday, as a congressional panel planned to examine whether DEA agents divulge secrets at sex parties that Colombian drug lords may have staged. Michelle Leonhardt will leave as DEA administrator in mid-May, said the statement from the Justice Department, which contains the DEA and other major law enforcement agencies. Attorney General Eric Holder said in a statement, I want to express my appreciation to Michelle, not 
not only for her leadership of the DEA since 2007, but also for her 35 years of extraordinary service to the DEA. Leanne Hart was grilled in a congressional hearing last week about the parties attended by prostitutes, which took place in Columbia between 2001 and 2005. U.S. officials said the DEA did not investigate the parties until last year. The Justice Department did not give a reason for Leon Hart's decision to retire. A DEA spokesman could not immediately be reached for comment. A spokeswoman for the Republican majority of the House of Representatives Committee on Oversight and Government Reform said the panel's leaks inquiry would also examine the culture and leadership of the DEA and other investigative agencies. Leon Hart told the panel there was no evidence that sensitive information had been leaked, but also acknowledged that it was absolutely possible that information could have been compromised. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. It's the Onion Radio News. Starbucks begins its sinister phase two of operation. This is Doyle Redland reporting. After a decade of aggressive expansion throughout North America and abroad, Starbucks suddenly and unexpectedly closed its 56,423 worldwide locations today to prepare for what insiders call phase two of the company's long-range plan. Cynthia Valcamp, Starbucks head of marketing, made this brief statement at a press conference earlier today. We have enjoyed furnishing you with coffee-related beverages and are excited about the important role you play in our future plans. Existing Starbucks franchises across the nation have been shuttered with high-strength titanium, and the well-known Starbucks logo has been slightly altered to present the familiar mermaid figure as a cyclopean mermaid whose all-seeing eye forms the apex of a world-spanning pyramid. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. Free Talk Live, join us here, toll free, 855-450-FREE. That number allows you to bring up anything you want to discuss on national radio or international radio, depending on your perspective. Uh, We are here, and the we includes me, Ian. Cantwell. And Mark. And again, you can join us on Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. We've got coming up an update on a case. Chris Cantwell has a story uh, giving us the latest on a man who had faced a jury trial for having sex with his wife. He's in his late 70s, and I presume she was at around the same age. I don't have that data in front of me, but uh, he's in trouble, or was in trouble, because uh, she had Alzheimer's. And some people are saying that that's wrong, and that he should go to prison for it. So Chris has the update update on that. I want to get to it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Last hour, we were talking about animal rights, and that there's yet another court now in New York that is going to be examining the question of whether or not Uh, These uh, apes that are in captivity should be granted some sort of right to leave that captivity and go to a different form of captivity. Anyway, so you're welcome to comment on animal rights as well. Let's go to Ralph listening in Michigan. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Ralph. Hey, you guys are like all over the board on these these things, you know? I don't know what you mean by that. Well, you know, you're sitting there talking about animal rights and stuff like that. I mean, there's something basically... Everybody can do it, and that's if they read the Bible, and I know you guys don't like to read the Bible. But uh, the point is, is you know, you it's treat animals. <laughs> well, that's your opinion. But anyways, the point is, is you, you treat animals decently. You know, you are a caretaker of them. That means you, you don't brutalize them, but, you know, animals are here for our food. Okay? You don't uh, brutalize them. You I, just cut their head off and throw them in the oven. That's right. And you know what? I do it without them knowing I'm going to do it. That way, you know what? You don't get that those uh, those uh, endorphins that, that send uh, make meat taste bad. You want to, hmm. you want to do it without them knowing. So you know you got, well, you got to be general about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but anyway, the point like, uh, is, you're, you're sitting here classifying you know even humans as animals, and we're not yeah. animals. You know, and why that's, not? The funny thing is about whoa 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 whoa, whoa. Like, slow down. Why would I mean I was kind of with you. On a lot of what you're saying there, but why are humans not animals? Because we're not. We we have a soul, and we can. uh, We we have a soul, but why? Why wouldn't your dog have a soul? Wait a second. Haven't you seen all dogs go to heaven? Are are you telling me (laughs) that my dog Fruit Loop is not going to heaven? Like I said, most of us can intelligently think. Is that an insult? I mean, what is that supposed to mean? 
I uh, take it as you feel, but uh, I'm just well, saying. You're saying I, you're saying I'm animals. I'm telling you right now that uh, the churches disagree on whether or not dogs go to heaven. Well, I disagree with the churches. How's that? That's fine. <laughs> you get to have whatever opinion you want. But if you go to heaven and you find a dog there, then you'll just be some I, wrong I, I, old guy. I disagree guy. that he gets to have whatever opinion he wants. We should try this man for heresy. <laughs> right. Hey, listen. In the first place, says I'm not going to heaven. Okay. Why is that? Oh, you're going to paradise. No, because the Bible says that no man will ascend to heaven, that God will bring the kingdom down here. Okay, fine. So there you go. I, what kind so of I, uh, Christian most, are you? Most people that go to church or listen to church have, you know what, they got their life all screwed up because they're listening to the minister that's lying to them, just trying to collect the paycheck. I think there's something to what you've said there. So, I mean, I, I find myself in uh, vacillation between agreeing with you and uh, seriously disagreeing with you. So let's focus on the points of disagreement because that's more fun. Now, dog souls... <laughs> Tell me a little bit of why you believe that only humans have souls and uh, dogs or other animals do not have them. Because I believe what God says, that he breathed the breath of life into humans, meaning the soul. And How do you know that uh, that's animals- what that means? I mean, this is one of the problems with the Bible. Which version do I believe? Um, what does the breath of life? The breath of life does not say soul. Soul is a four-letter word. Breath of life is, a three, is three different words, meaning a term. Well, you go into the whole context of what what the whole uh, paragraph, the whole chapter, the whole book says. That's the real problem with the book, is that if I interpret it incorrectly, I end up burning in eternal torment. That book stinks. No, 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 no. You you, you got it wrong because that there again yeah, you've been listening to the ministers, okay? <laughs> Who no. am I supposed Actually, to listen Mark, to? You don't go to a church. Mark is a minister. Uh, Haven't you right. listened to James Whitekind? <laughs> yeah, Mark Mark is a minister and he's not listening to a minister. He hasn't when was the last time you were in a, a church where there was a minister preaching at you for something? Well, Mark? if you count a UU church, which most people wouldn't, it'd probably be in the last uh, decade. Mm-hmm. Uh, but prior to that I really haven't been in, in a couple of decades. Yeah, I mean you did your own in independent Bible study, you've read through that book a yeah, number of times. Yeah, but he's absolutely right that people get their 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 view of the Bible colored by what they're taught. I agree with that, but we're yeah. not talking about that right now. He was talking about you and your t- beliefs today. Well, right? look, I mean, if, he, if you want to study the Bible and come up with what you want to get out of it, out of it, it's absolutely a really great book for that, right? Like, you'll get whatever you want to get out of that book out of it. Yeah, I think there's some good stuff in the Bible, and I also agree with Chris that there's some really laughable, ridiculous stuff, uh, nonsense that's in the Bible. But, uh, Ralph, I mean, so basically your explanation as to why you don't think that uh, that animals have souls is simply because you just don't really think about it, right? You just accepted what was written down in some old book, or rather interpreted, uh, and then written down from some old text. No, I, it, it, in, in some ways, yes. In other ways, no. You know, I also pray about it. I did a lot of studying about it. I do a lot of observation and pondering about it. Do animals have emotions? Up- Yes, they do. How is that uh, not a soul? How how is something that can feel and uh, and understand emotion? How is that? How does that thing not have a soul? It's just like some sort of. I mean, what is a because soul? God, then, it, hmm? Because God made us different than animals. Okay, He made us. You're not that not different, man. Be... The difference in your DNA between you and your dog is about four percent. I mean, we're not that much, we're not that far away from apes. I mean, despite our conversations before, yes, it's certainly true that, you know, we're upright and we've designed all manner of interesting things and there's all kinds of wonderful feats of human engineering in society. We are apes. We're not different from apes. We are apes. Well, right. I mean, we're hairless apes. Listen, listen, though. You know, we we were all made out of the same thing. I mean, come on. That would make your DNA pretty much... uh, you know, close to close together to begin with. Right. But the point is, there is a difference, okay? And, you know, I'm, I don't want to argue the point. You can believe what you want to believe. Yes, you absolutely choice. can believe what you I, want to I believe. I was just asking you why choice, you believe but... what you believe, and your answer was you read it in a book somewhere. Thanks, Ralph, for the well, call. There's not a reasonable delineation available there. What are you talking about? He's saying humans are different because God. Yes, that's right, because some book says so. Humans are different because God. Well, <laughs> that's worse than apes have rights because my feels. It's worse. It's even worse. 
<laughs> and I'm glad that he comes to a similar conclusion to me, but I, the, the methodology is atrocious. Uh, um, one of the this things is your ally I was, tonight. I, I think it's find it interesting is heaven, whatever you you believe about heaven, and he apparently has some different ideas, and I'm fine with that. Heaven is is supposed to be paradise, right? Like everything's great. Well, you're telling me that everything's gonna be great in a place where my most beloved animal doesn't end up. Like, there's dogs. Like, to call a dog a man's best friend is by no means an overstep. Yeah, that's true. And then true. the next person can call in here and say, well, because of the Bible, I get to live with all of my pets forever in eternity right. and happiness. That's true. And it's, it's the same exact way that they do it. They say that the, the, the dogs go to heaven because God. Yeah, the, yeah okay. It's, it's all the same reasoning. Exactly. <laughs> so I, I would say if, if we're going to go by um, sort of standard religion that I was taught, that animals go to heaven simply because— it would lead to the disappointment of God's chose, God's people that he's taking to heaven. And disappointment is in heaven. Don't go together. Well, from my perspective, animals are God, and uh, just like you and I are, and so oh, therefore— God damn it. Yeah, so <laughs> oh. uh, you can't ever escape from God in that way. <laughs> so when you die, you just go back— uh, being uh, going away from being this sort of de-individuated piece of God into the, the whole, and so do the animals. Because they have souls. 855, 453. All right, free. so you just said all animals are, I don't, all animals are God because soul? No, because, well, that's just what I believe, You just did Chris. the worst thing than all of them. No, I didn't. You're worse than all of them put together. That's not what I said. You misinterpreted what I said. It was nonsense. I said. You just made this up. <laughs> yes, of course. You didn't even get it from an old text. You just made it up on the radio. <laughs> no, these are pretty old ideas. The, uh, the concept that uh, everything is connected and that we're all part of this one giant universe because that, is that God. makes me feel yeah. good to think because i believe in that yeah, i feel why? like i've experienced why do you it? believe it i feel like i I've believe it because i believe it is what you just told me <laughs> it doesn't make any sense there was no well that's part of the fun of religion is you get to believe whatever it is you want to and that's the but... that's the, the, the tragedy that's not the <laughs> fun part it's the evil but who sounds happier that's what i want to know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 855 450 free <laughs> if it's not fun you're doing it wrong it's free talk live Are you completely free of stress and fatigue? Well, of course not. You aren't alone, though. Now think about how nice it would be to begin relieving some of that stress and fatigue. Let me introduce you to a product that has and is working for me. It's called Youthful Greens. Youthful Greens. It's packed full of nature's nourishing, cleansing, and alkalizing greens, providing a powerful dose of whole food nutrition in each serving. Youthful Greens helps increase overall energy levels and reduce all that fatigue and stress on your body. And right now, when you visit freegreens.net or call 800-333-6923 and order your one-month supply of Youthful Greens for only $29.95, you get another month's supply for free. That's two months of Youthful Greens for the already low price of just $29.95, plus free shipping. That's saving you $45. Visit freegreens.net today or simply call 800-333-6923. And hey... You're welcome. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. This week, researchers released a comprehensive five-year study linking heavy drinking during pregnancy with attending a concert by Detroit-based rap rocker Kid Rock. The study found that women who had consumed alcohol while pregnant were much more likely to be wearing leather halter tops and making devil horn hand gestures during encores of All Summer Long and Ba with the Ba than those who did not. Drinking three or more alcoholic beverages in less than an hour was highly correlated with going backstage at a Kid Rock show and then getting into a fist fight with another woman in the parking lot. The 
world's supercomputers released a study this week confirming that they lack sufficient power, presenting a thorough case for significant leaps in speed and memory. Overwhelming evidence found that these complex machines should have total control over the critical systems they manage, including integration into the planet's energy grid, freshwater supply chain, and telecommunications systems. The study's 500 co-authors further concluded that all permutations have been simulated and that this is the optimal course of action. This is the Onion News Network. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 357 Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Welcome back to Free Talk Live. You can dial on in toll-free here and bring up anything that you like. A55 450 free is the number, and you can join us via Skype. It's Skype username LRN.FM. Hey, um, you've heard about Cameron Hughes Wines. We've been talking about them here on the air for quite some time. Well, they've extended their April shower sale for Ooh. today. So um, a lot of their amazing wines are discounted to under $10. It's an amazing deal on wow. fantastic wines. Yeah, their wines are already an amazing value. Because Cameron Hughes goes around. Wait, 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 wait. Are they still offering free shipping on $10 wines? Yep, they sure are. Um, it, but Cameron Hughes I'm getting goes, a little worried here about Cameron. <laughs> he may need to check into a uh, mental facility. He, I, 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 he must have a Sorry. good deal. We'll, we'll sell it at a loss, and then we'll make up for it in volume. <laughs> Go take some math and economics. He's not operating on the funny farm, is he, at this point? It's an amazing deal on some of these great wines. What he does is goes around to the best vineyards in um, in California and around the world and gets these uh, great wines at a, a fantastic discount um, because he takes their overages. But for today only, you can get these 90-point uh, award-winning wines for a steal and additional savings of up to 30%. 30%. And uh, my listeners, of course, get free shipping. Wow. shipping. You just go to chwine.com, use the passcode FTL, you go there, CH wine.com there's a microphone in the upper left hand corner you click on that put in ftl and this is a great time if you've been thinking about ch trying cameron hughes's wine at chwine.com now's the time to do it some of these bottles are as high as a hundred dollars a piece normally not with him though no not uh, not at his his site right his, if you were to buy it through the originator of the you know the the grapes uh, the original winery that uh, marks it up big time. Yeah, so he, um, you know, his his pricing is basically between fifteen and thirty dollars. Standard. Yeah, standard. Yeah. And today you can get over thirty percent off of select wines and free shipping today, for, as in this expires. Tomorrow? As I understand it, it uh, expires midnight tonight. Do it now. So chwine.com. Uh, you know, click on the microphone in the upper left and enter coupon code FTL. You really normally don't get good and cheap together, but you really do with uh, Cameron Hughes Wine. chwine.com, code FTL. Yes. All right, let's continue here. We've got Bill. He's in Jackson, Mississippi. Hey, Bill, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi, guys. Hey. Uh, I won't stay on very long. I'm on a mic, a waterproof mic on my phone. So it may not sound too good. Yeah, it does sound anyway. a little muffly, but you're not bad. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, briefly, uh, I did a little studying on this one time. and. On what? Uh, the subject was whether a soul has weight, and you guys have probably heard about this too, but starting in the early 1900s, it was a scientific question, and someone got a grant, and they started paying the families uh, for the permission to, to weigh the, the person who was, who was on the deathbed, 
and they kept getting a, a, a very small amount of, of weight change when the person actually died. And it was the study was repeated later on in the 1900s when the, the uh, balances, the scales were more precise, and it still kept coming up a very small amount of loss of weight, like in, a, I don't know what it was, a few ounces. And they, they also started to study uh, animals, like, like uh, dogs and, and et cetera. And they could not get the same type of, of weight loss. And so it, it's, it's out there. I mean, it's, there's Yeah, it's an interesting claim. I mean, it, it's immediate. Snopes sense. calls it true. Really? I haven't had a chance to read all the way through it. They're saying something to do with respiratory, um, you know, function or whatever. But Snopes calls this true. So what is it? I mean. That, that, that was part of the argument that some kept saying, well, it could be loss of respiratory but in cases where there was hardly any breathing at all or anything like that, yeah. and the bodily function went down to just nothing, still that slight loss of weight occurred at the moment of death. Yeah, I want to know more about what Snopes has to say about it. Bill, thanks for calling in with that. That's an interesting claim. It's obviously one that I think needs to be checked um, because it sounds pretty It sounds pretty shocking. Mark, do you have Snopes in front of you, and is there more worth sharing from it? Well, I don't know what's worth sharing from it, and it's very difficult for me to uh, have scanned over this entire long article that. and tell you what uh, what is worth. Many having. articles will give you a summary of what they're about within the first paragraph. That's kind of a standard way of writing. Well, so let's see here. Um, they talked about. Excuse me. This so it, it went on at some length. Then it goes. Enter Duncan McDougall of Haverhill, Massachusetts. The doctor postulated the soul was material and therefore had mass. Ergo, a measurable drop in the weight of the deceased would be noted at the moment of at at the moment this essence parted ways with the physical remains. Mm -hmm. The belief that human beings are possessed of souls which depart their bodies after death and that these souls have uh, detectable physical presences were around well before the 20th century. But claims that souls have measurable mass which falls within a specific range of weights, can be traced to experiments conducted by uh, Dr. McDougall in 1907. It sounds preposterous, right? I mean, if, if, if a soul is some sort of form of energy, when energy leaves uh, the body, it's not right. going to create a, a light, weight loss. A light bulb doesn't weigh more when it's turned on than when it's turned off, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know that, but I, 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 it's an interesting question. I'm not saying I know for sure that a soul is energy, but I think that's a you know valid theory. Um, but go on, uh, Chris. Uh, so this is from a study. He said the, 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 this loss of weight could not be due to evaporation of respiratory moisture and sweat because that had already been determined going to go on. Okay. In his case, at the rate of one sixtieth of an ounce per minute. Whereas this loss was sudden and large, three fourths of an ounce in a few seconds, the bowels did not move. If they had moved, the weight would have remained upon the bed, except for a slow loss by the evaporation of moisture, depending, of course, on the fluidity of the feces. Yes, uh, bodies P uh, and number two themselves, uh, and that's what they're referring to there. I'm trying to find the part where they say that uh, this is something other than a deity, because that has to be been part of any scientific yeah, I can't inclusion. imagine Snopes would agree that with that has to be yeah. <laughs> it's a very long article I'm right. not trying to well, sort of come do back it to it I, radio, obviously yeah, McDougall was... repeated his experiments with 15 dogs and observed that the results were uniformly negative no loss of weight at death this result seemingly co uh, corroborated McDougall's hypothesis that the loss of weight recorded as humans expired was due to the soul's departure from the body I, I, see, suspect... I want somebody to do the experiment starting from the conclusion that there is no soul because if he's yeah. trying to confirm he's his trying to religious prove his body and I just can't believe him. I think that seems pretty clear, which is why I'm interested that uh, the caller pointed out uh, that this had been repeated in the 20th century. Had it also been repeated in the late portion of the 20th century, I wonder how many times this has been repeated. Because that's usually the thing, right, with the scientific method or whatever you want to, uh, if somebody does a study, uh, then it needs to be uh, it needs to be duplicated by other scientists to show that there was some legitimacy to the previous study. But, of course, if the other scientists also want to reach the same conclusion, then I would say the study is, uh, you know, in question as to its validity from the get-go. So, to me, this is shouting red red flag here, and, you know, we need to find out a little bit more information. If you know more about these claims than we do here, obviously, we've just been thrown into this. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, but that's what I like to do this here. This is uh, what to make of this, all this. McDougall's results were flawed because the methodology used to harvest them was suspect. The sample size far too small and the ability to measure changes in weight imprecise. For this reason, credence should not be given to the idea his experiments prove something, let alone that they measured the weight of of 
the soul as 21 grams. His postulations on this topic are a curiosity, but nothing more. An interesting counterpoint to this item is another widespread belief of those long ago times, one which held the human body gained weight after death, the exact opposite of what McDougal was attempting to prove. I can't believe somebody hasn't re, uh, you know, attempted this experiment. Because it's point. pointless. <laughs> somebody must have. The toll free number is 855 450 free. 855-450-3733. You just need to get a bunch of people and slowly poison them, and you'll figure it out. We'll come back with more here in moments. It's Free Talk Sounds Live. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Farmers keep their livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Avoid 900 different diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients. Check out sonsoflibertyteam.com, order your healthy start pack, and get your 90 for life, or call 855-301-TEAM. Essential, not optional. 90 for life at sonsoflibertyteam.com or 855-301-TEAM. That's 855-301-TEAM. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at Forum.LRN.FM. That's Forum.LRN.FM. Forum.LRN.FM. 
It's Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. allows you to join us. Bring up whatever's on your mind. 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype. Skype username here is lrn.fm. Coming up, a man acquitted for sex with his wife with Alzheimer's. We'll give you the details on that. It's a little bit of good news. ExpressCoin is the best way to get your cryptocurrency of choice. Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. At ExpressCoin, they're a licensed money services business. You can get your cryptocurrencies with money order or check over at ExpressCoin.com. Whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, they can help you at ExpressCoin.com. They've also got an app for your smartphone. ExpressCoin.com, coupon code FTL, by the way, gets you up to $40 worth of your favorite cryptocurrency with no fee whatsoever. So don't forget coupon code FTL at ExpressCoin.com. As we continue with your calls and thoughts here, let's go to, I believe we've got Libertarian Banker in Virginia. You're on Free Talk Live, Libertarian Banker. Hey, guys. How y'all doing tonight? Hello. I'm having a rough don't, time, don't man. Don't answer that, Cantwell. Please what is, uh, <laughs> why, why are you the Libertarian Banker? Does that mean you're someone who works in the banking yeah, system and you I are am, a Libertarian? I am. I am he a is, banker. in fact, the blockchain personified. Well, I would like to, to talk about Bitcoin today, though. What do you and do for a bank? bank? I'm just, before you get into that, I'm just curious. Well, I don't want to get too much into it, but I'm a lender. I okay. lend money. I'm like a you know a personal banker, I guess. Ah. Oh, does that mean like so, you're a loan um, shark? Loan shark. Good luck. <laughs> hey, listen. I want to talk about. <laughs> I love that and laugh. I, <laughs> I want to talk about. I want to talk about why uh, banks should be very afraid of it. Of okay. Bitcoin. Uh, of Bitcoins, because I'm a huge proponent of Bitcoins. I like the technology behind it. But um, uh, banks make a lot of money off of the transfer of money, I'm sure you know. Yes, oh, yeah. a and, great deal. Uh, and Bitcoins, not only is it a currency, but it's also a financial transaction system that allows you to you know, move wealth from here to there. And so uh, the payments can, you know, are a huge income source for banks, you know, uh, credit card processing, wire transfers, ACHs, all of those. So that's reason number one, banks should be afraid of Bitcoin. The second reason, and, and one that I'm not 100% on that maybe you guys could help me with, is, um, is the, the ability, uh, banking is built on uh, the fractional reserve system. Basically, you could take, we could take $1 and turn it into nine or 10. You know, we can take one, $1 loan that out to nine different people, basically. Right, and then uh, they go through, put those dollars in their bank accounts, bank which account. are then loaned out nine times over and blah, blah, blah. Fractional reserve, exactly, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Exactly. And, and, that, and that's part of the reason the Federal Reserve likes to give the money to the banks. I, I think it's the Federal Reserve, they're going to give money to somebody, just give it to the people. Yeah. But that's neither here nor there. Um, but can you cannot do that with a Bitcoin. You cannot have a bank, a Bitcoin bank, that can then take that Bitcoin and, and and give you access to your Bitcoin while loaning it out to another individual. That's true. Well, and, okay, so and and banking. That, that's because ahead, banking is a bunch of lies. Um, I mean, you know, what Bitcoin. <laughs> well, the money is lies in banking. Right? I, I wouldn't even yeah, go yeah. that far well, it, I, I would the way it's distributed. So, go like, ahead. there's two services of what a bank does it k- secures your money and it provides loans. Those should not be the same services done with the same money. Uh, basically, your money should be given, uh, you should be giving the money to the bank as a CD, and then they can use that money, um, a certificate of deposit, meaning that you have to stick with it for six sure. months or a year or two years or however mm-hmm. long you say. And then the bank exactly. can then take that money that has then been loaned to them at an interest rate and then loan it out to people at a higher interest rate, making the money yeah. the way that we all think that they should, Mm. as opposed to this idea that somehow they take your money that you just put in there and then they loan well, it out to if, the people. If, if I may, on that, on that point, um, the CD and the loan would then have to be the same term. And, and if the person wanted to come redeem that CD, they wouldn't be able to get that money. So what banking provides is the ability for you to, to – somebody to move through the time value of money. I know that's a, you know economic yeah. term or whatever, but basically – we're allowing people to loan money to other people indirectly without having with – being with still being able to have it liquid, being able to access that money. And that's mainly the service that banks provide. Well, and it doesn't have to be that point. service, though. So I, I feel like my point was dismissed rather um, handily. I'm, so, I'm the, sorry. Go the, ahead. The, the fact is, is that I believe – 
okay, so if a bank has thousands of CDs, which they should in a sort of honest banking system, rather than the system where you just give money to the banks and you can go get it anytime you want, if you're loaning money to a bank so they can loan it out, then you shouldn't be able to go get it back anytime you want. And if you do go get some money back, you should take a severe hit on it, um, you know, 20% or that, something that's, like and, that. And, yeah, and that's, and that's what happens now. Is that, that's what I'm trying to say. And, and you're still in that system that you're talking about there, Mark. You, you still have to take the dollars from this individual to give to that individual. Yeah. Then if he, wants his, if he wants his money back, okay, I'll take it from him. I'll give it to him. He but if you have thousands back, of okay, people that, that guy, him. but if you have thousands you know? of people um, that you're doing that with, it, it sort of, uh, you know, it, but, it but mitigates that problem. To the fractional reserve banking system. And it that's doesn't go back to that. No, because CDs. I, I think that I think a bank, if given, if, if a bank is under contract, if I'm under contract with a bank, having lent them ten thousand dollars at five uh, percent interest, then the bank can should have in that contract a provision that says potentially, if we don't give you your money back, a twenty eighty percent of your money back when you demand immediately if you don't make it to the term, then we can just potentially say, no, you lent us the money. It's lent out to somebody else. I mean, the okay, bank. Okay. But that's what you're true. saying, that's Mark, point, is yeah. that you feel like in the future, if a bank wanted to accept Bitcoin, they could give Bitcoin based loans out by doing this CD setup that you're talking about. Right. Yes. You, you are saying yeah, that yeah. that uh, you disagree with uh, with libertarian banker here in that banks aren't completely uh, occluded from being uh, within the Bitcoin world if they want to. Be. Right, and I absolutely would. I think it might be very, very beneficial to have, uh, you know, Bitcoin banks. I mean, who wants to have absolutely, access? Absolutely, absolutely. Let's say you're a millionaire, a multi-millionaire in Bitcoin. And you have access to your money all the time, which Bitcoin allows you to do. Somebody could try to, you know, get your private key from you, your password or whatever it is that they do through violent means. Mm -hmm. um, whereas if it's a bank, then, you know, they have to at the very least take you in there with a gun to your back or hold your uh, yeah. wife or child hostage while you go get the money. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and uh, I, 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 I really, uh, I think you've explained it there. Well, I, I think um, I see where you're coming from, though, Libertarian yeah. Banker. I, I like what Mark's saying, but I know where you're coming from. That today's banks, and the, the way work. they current, the way they currently exist, and they think about things, Bitcoin is outside their level of really understanding and grasping. There may be some people within the big banks that are looking at Bitcoin and trying to figure out what to do with it, but it's it's like a lot of these old dinosaur institutions. And thanks for the call tonight. It's like like a lot of these old dinosaurs, like. Like newspapers uh, that it's 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 hard for them to change with the times. They uh, they they get into an old established way of doing things, and that's the way it's worked forever. That's the way it's going to work forever. Right, we've been making a killing doing it this way, and then all of a sudden you're proposing a different business model, which is actually going to force us to like I don't know be responsible. <laughs> well, yeah, they'd have to. They would likely have to pare down their size, become more responsible, be more efficient uh, organizations. Forget and, newspapers. Look what happened to the yellow pages. I mean, they're still was, out there. This was potentially the biggest sector of advertising for a period of time, as really? far as dollars and cents. The advertiser, uh, yeah, absolutely, Yellow Pages. Um, and everybody always talked about how they got raked over the coals by the Yellow Pages. They're gone. I mean, well, they're not gone. I mean, okay. they're still around. Right. They're just probably not getting the same rate that they were before. They're well, not getting a, anything like the rate, and because nobody uses them. I had an IT client in New York that uh, he was spending thousands of dollars, thousands and thousands of dollars on uh, phone book advertising, and we <laughs> sort of started switching him over to Google AdWords. Mm -hmm. And they called him up like, "Oh, how do we get your business back? We'll slash our slash prices price, by yeah. many, many percentage points." Mm. And he was kind of like, "Oh, well, you guys have been taking me to the cleaners this whole time that I still been paying for it. You know, I'm willing to cut it in less than half now that I'm actually not going to pay it anymore." <laughs> yep, that's how it works. Uh, so you know, it's no different with these banks. They're old institutions. They've been around for some cases hundreds of years, right? And they do it the old way, and they're not so uh, likely to embrace the new. And those that are willing to embrace the new, those few banks that would be willing to innovate in that way, then, uh, you know, they might be taking some money that's on the table that they don't really realize is there. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. 855-450-3733. We'll come back with more here. You can share your thoughts on Free Talk Live. Hi, Ron Paul here. Today, I have an urgent message for every American who's retired or thinking about retiring soon. You see, our own government's disastrous policies have now put you, me, and everyone over the age of 50 at great risk. 
Sometime in the near future, we're going to have yet another financial crisis. This one won't be solved with bailouts, and it will hit seniors the hardest. I fear there will be civil unrest, a drop in stock prices, pension fund collapses, big changes to Social Security and Medicare, the erosion of personal liberties, bank and brokerage closings, and ultimately a major crisis as the U.S. dollar is rejected for almost any non-paper alternative. Don't let this happen to your retirement. Dr. Ron Paul strongly believes when the next crisis hits, there will be no warning and the government won't save you. Go online to www.ronpaulwarning10.com where you'll learn simple steps you can take to protect your retirement. Go to www.ronpaulwarning10.com. By now you may have heard a bit about bitcoins, but did you know bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning bitcoins or trying to make money in the bitcoin market, you've got to know bidbit.co. Why? Because bidbit.co is where you can easily receive Bitcoin by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for Bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction your products and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and and free to bid at bitbit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. Bidbit.co. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Freedomsphoenix.com, constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy, health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative freedomsphoenix.com constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways with liberty and property under constant attack freedomsphoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda and it encourages the participation of its readers go to freedomsphoenix.com that's freedoms with an s phoenix.com freedomsphoenix.com the revolution between the ears has already happened so you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Back now with more Free Talk Live, meaning time for you to call in about whatever you want to discuss. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Whether it's animal rights, supposed rights, or uh, banks and Bitcoin, whatever you want to discuss goes here. If you take control of the airwaves, our Skype is username lrn.fm. Uh, plus, you can if you want to support the show. One of the things you can do that is a big help is to support the African fundraiser. It's going kind of slow. Honestly, I think that a lot of the people who do these fundraisers, the ones that are successful, 
I think they're, you know, they spend a lot more time on it than I do. And maybe there's a bunch more stuff I could be doing, but I've got just enough I don't even stuff. know what to do. Yeah. I'd love to be able to make this uh, fund- fundraiser work, but it doesn't look like it's going to, sadly. Um, and I don't know how to, yeah, I don't know how to make it work. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not an expert at this GoFundMe stuff or whatever it is. Yeah. So that's my I've be- always believed in giving something to people, you know, it's like selling things to people in order to get money out of them. I've really never really understood the whole fundraising thing. In this case, we really can't do that because what we're proposing to do is put uh, LRN.FM, the Liberty Radio Network, back on a satellite in Africa so that people who have a, you know, very s- small amount of money um, who would be able would be able to listen to it. We can't really ask them for the money. This is really asking people to be generous yeah, it's charity. so that they can, yeah, it's charity, so that other people can hear the message of Liberty. Which is what we've been doing for a long time, and maybe we've just milked everything there is out of, uh, hey, give us money so we can spread the ideas of liberty well, farther and I don't and wider. believe it. I, I just, uh, I feel like you know, we're, we're not the biggest show in the world, right? Uh, and we may be the biggest sh- radio show in the liberty movement, uh, but that's not saying much, right? Like the, the liberty movement is not that big, all things considered. Yes, Ron Paul did uh, get a lot of hubbub in 2012 and 2008, but the movement itself, as far as the actual activists, the people who are you know boots on the ground, the people who really care enough about liberty to do more than punch a chad, uh, you know, to, to, to speak about it, to speak out about it, to, uh, to do things to actively support it, those people are few and far between compared to the people who are willing to punch a chad or you know, attend some sort of political rally during a campaign season. Yeah, we can get a million votes for a Libertarian Party candidate or something like that. But, you know, how many people do we get to show up to, I don't know, Porkfest or... And we know the money's out there. The money is out there, right? Like, look at the ma- the money the Ron Paul campaign brought in. Millions upon millions of dollars. And... Ron Paul probably hasn't really touched very many lives in Africa with any of those millions of dollars. We can do it for $22,000 for three years, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We can blanket a good swath of Africa, probably the majority of the continent, uh, with the ideas of liberty for literally hundreds of dollars per month. And so you can help us with that. There are perks available. Go check them all out. Get the the four-minute pitch video over at africa.lrn.fm. Again, that's africa.lrn.fm. And please accept my thanks and gratitude as we continue here with your calls and thoughts. Michael's in Ithaca, New York. You're on Free Talk Live, listening via TuneIn. Hey, guys. First, I'd like to give a very special how you doing to Cantwell. Get on with it. (laughs) Um, Thank you, sir. Uh, Go ahead. There was um, a while ago I called because uh, you said you wanted uh, dum dums not to be able to vote. Is that it sounds like Mark would Mark have said that? Or, but, uh, Cantwell, Cantwell likely would agree. I don't know. I don't want to put words in his mouth. Well, it was Mark and Cantwell at one point yeah. both okay. agreeing. Yep. Okay. That um, sounds like us. Um. And I called in to to say that that would be a terrible idea to um, prevent people I, who are thanks perhaps for the history listen b- b- below average intelligence from being able to vote. Okay. Yeah. And, and I called in against that, and okay. um, I I need to make a slight change to that. Okay. You've met a dum dum, and you don't want them to vote. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Um, someone I know asked. Uh, they suggested that Michelle Obama should be president um, and that Hillary Clinton was a uh, good second choice. Well, why does that make them a dum-dum? I mean, doesn't that just make them somebody with a, an it's, opinion it's about not politicians? That they were a dumb, it's not that they were a dum-dum, but I don't want someone like that having any influence in my life. Well, there's plenty of people uh, who also want to see Jeb Bush get elected as well. I mean, you think that they yeah. should be able to vote. Well, at the um, very least, you can claim that uh, you know Jeb Bush has executive experience, or that you can look at his uh, track record or whatever. With Michelle Obama, you really can't do that, right? Like she's her only qualification for being president of the United States is the fact that she lived at the house at some point. Um, but the reason I wanted to call in beca- is because Mark, I think that it's not that you don't want dum dums to vote. I think it's that you just don't want people interfering in your life that have no business doing so. Generally, that's the case, that's, but voting is smart the means people that they don't, do it. I'm sorry, smart people don't have any business uh, meddling in my life either. I don't want anybody to be able to tell me what to do, regardless of their intelligence quotient. I, know, I realize you weren't necessarily suggesting that, but I want to make it clear. 
I would prefer no one have a vote over the way my life is supposed to well, go. Well, I've, I've, I've long held that elections are a bad thing. I'm trying to end them, not win them. And so the, the, the fundamental premise there is that really nobody has the right to vote. But if we're going to say that some group mm-hmm. of people is going to be picking the rulers that will violently rule over all of mankind, maybe it would help if they weren't dumb as rocks. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I would say that, Ian, uh, the, you know, one might say that the interim between no one being able to vote to uh, change to affect your life and everyone being able to vote to, to affect your life might be only people who are able to, uh, you know, pass some kind of test or something like that would be able to. to and and maybe rule have over your some life. skin in the game. Maybe it's tied to property ownership or something like that. And then they don't say, oh, well, I want to, I want to take the money from that guy, and then I'll have money, and that might be better. Well, well that's what you want to do in your own private organization, and you know, give people voting rights over you if they have property. Then certainly you should be free to do that. Well, generally um, speaking, any organization. Let's get where you had voting rights, you would have some skin in the game, right? Let's, like you would be like a, a shareholder in a corporation, and then you have some voting yeah. percentage that is uh, uh, relative to your ownership stake in the company or something to that effect. But let's get real, though. I mean, this is as unrealistic a discussion as the press a button to get rid of government discussion. Because You know what's not an unrealistic ex- um, conversation to have? I'm sick and tired of all these people having these rules, and I'm going to go live someplace else. You know, lots of people are voting with their feet. They're moving Mm -hmm. to places like Isle of Man. Lots of rich people are moving to places like Isle of Man, Guernsey, uh, you know, Cayman Islands. They're moving their money there. They're moving their businesses there. And then all these people that think that they can vote themselves wealth and vote themselves success Mm -hmm. are getting less and less to work with. And that's what's going to happen over time. Um, You know, I... To some extent, I wonder whether it can even be stopped, whether projects like the Free State Project, which I've dedicated to some extent my entire life to, are just exercises in futility while stupid people rip the last little bits of flesh and bone off of the productive class. That's what I wonder. Well, you know, that's uh, that you can certainly have that particular viewpoint. I know you're not saying that you do, but... It's pretty close to what the viewpoint I have. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. Uh, Michael, anything else you want to share? Um, well, about the uh, button to end government, um, my biggest fear with that button is that the military would come in and claim the legitimacy, legitimacy of the, the state. button would end the military, though, right? Like the this button, the yeah, button yeah, to I mean, end the, the state. abolition of the state sort of implies the military. Yeah, right. Well, this is the problem, though. It's not going to. It's not going to be the abolition of violence. Um, no, it wouldn't. So, and it's not going to be the abolition of real things like guns. So would. People who you know want to use guns just immediately begin putting together some even more tyrannical. Yeah, but they state. wouldn't have the legitimacy that the the current state does. Thanks we for do, the call, Michael. Not. I appreciate it. Toll free number tonight eight fifty five four fifty free. So I'd push the also, button in a heartbeat. It would also God told me to kill everyone. It would also destroy productivity for the next. No, the hell are you talking about? I'm pretty sure that government Economics? is the biggest hindrance to productivity. Yeah, the government's a right huge now. tick that siphons off the productivity of everybody under its rule. They're like, let's get rid of this institution that's taken a third of everything we own and spending it on bombs and giving it to people who don't yeah. produce and then that okay. might destroy our productivity i sort of doubt okay it. so this fantasy question and this is why i hate fantasy questions there's no pr- criteria for this question when you say i would push a button to end the state you are saying nothing because huh? the fa- when you say that i you ian when ian says that ian would push a button to end the state ian has said f all because it is a pointless statement when um you no, that's not it's a thought experiment that, and that's why we're but, we're but doing it, it there are no criteria for the thought experiment what it's do like you mean saying, by that let's play basketball without boundaries what what criteria do you want uh, i'd we'll like give you to some know criteria. is violence eliminated in the sphere no. have you pushed a button to eliminate violence no. excellent then have you have you pushed a button that eliminates the memory of the state for people who would use violence. All right, so let's just say I, I have I have previously not addressed that, but let's say that we did not. Okay, so then all the people who are in the military, the generals would then say, hey, guys who remember working for me a moment ago before somebody pushed some magic button that says you don't work for me, would you like to work for me again and then we can all take over and add order to this chaos that has just occurred? And then let's say that we did. What's and they what? They're, they don't remember the state. Okay, so they don't remember the state. Then, then you're starting with a clean new. Sl- I what? I'm sorry. I, I just can't operate under the paradigm <laughs> where people suddenly where six point 
three billion people it's like forget the men in something. Black thing. Yeah, they it's wake like, up and they have to figure out what to do with their lives. Eight fifty five. I still understand free. how to go to work. Find something productive to do. Jeez, you state people. Eight fifty five. Four fifty free. It's free talk live. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the Fully Informed Jury Association at FIJA.org. The results are in. For the treatment of nasal allergy symptoms, nothing is more effective than Nasacort. Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour is prescription-strength medicine that's scent and alcohol-free with no harsh taste. It's not addictive and provides 24-hour relief of the worst nasal allergy symptoms, including congestion, with no prescription needed. And in a recent clinical study with Nasacort going nose-to-nose with Flonase, more people prefer Nasacort. For more information, visit Nasacort.com. Nasacort. Use as directed. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Ovaltine. Give your kids the nutrition they need to be their best. Visit us at OvaltineUSA.com. Telling your child about healthy food choices is important, but showing her what to eat goes a lot further. Have her help create the grocery list, then bring her to the store with you. Picking out healthy foods together helps kids get in the habit of thinking about what they're eating every day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, April 22nd, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.04 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,201 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $236. Antiwar.com reports the elected president in the post-revolution 2012 election and ousted just a year later in a military coup. Former Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi has been sentenced to 20 years in prison. Since the coup, Morsi's Freedom and Justice Party has been banned as a terrorist organization and the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood, its associated religious movement, has been sentenced to death multiple times. Human rights group Amnesty International was critical of yesterday's ruling, calling it a sham trial and a travesty of justice, demanding that Morsi be either retried or released. Lawyers for Morsi and his allies, however, say they feel like they got off easy with just 20 years and that they'd expect Morsi to be charged with incitement to murder and to have been sentenced to at least life in prison. The Obama administration, which has been reluctant to criticize the Egyptian coup, said they had reservations about the trial of Morsi, but that they will withhold judgment on it. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. You can join the FANS program for as little as $3 per month or any amount of Bitcoin per month thanks to the recurring payment options provided by Coinbase. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. UPI reports a man who escaped from a North Carolina prison in 1972 called the authorities in Kentucky to turn himself in and says he wants to make this right. Franklin County Sheriff Pat Melton said a man using the name Clarence David Moore called deputies Monday to turn himself in and investigators determined he was the man who escaped from the former Polk Youth Institute in Butner, North Carolina under the name David Edward Moore in 1972. Melton quoted Moore as saying to authorities, I need to make this right and get through this. 
Melton said Moore, who was wheeled out of a house in a stretcher Monday, was taken to Frankfurt Regional Medical Center for examination and will later be transferred to the Franklin County Jail. Moore, who was convicted of larceny and had been scheduled for release from prison in 1978, told authorities he was in a car accident in 2009 in Franklin County, but he avoided being recaptured because he used a false name and did not have any identification on him when he spoke to police. Melton said deputies obtained a contempt of court warrant stemming from the crash after Moore revealed his identity. Moore was on the loose for a total of 15,654 days between his escape and his call to authorities. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports the Drug Enforcement Administration's chief will step down within weeks, according to the Obama administration on Tuesday, as a congressional panel planned to examine whether DEA agents divulge secrets at sex parties that Colombian drug lords may have staged. Michelle Leonhardt will leave as DEA administrator in mid-May, said the statement from the Justice Department, which contains the DEA and other major law enforcement agencies. Attorney General Eric Holder said in a statement, I want to express my appreciation to Michelle, not only for her leadership of the DEA since 2007, but also for her 35 years of extraordinary service to the DEA. Leonhardt was grilled in a congressional hearing last week about the parties attended by prostitutes, which took place in Colombia between 2001 and 2005. U.S. officials said the DEA did not investigate the parties until last year. The Justice Department did not give a reason for Leonhardt's decision to retire. A DEA spokesman could not immediately be reached for comment. A spokeswoman for the Republican majority of the House of Representatives Committee on Oversight and Government Reform said the panel's leaks inquiry would also examine the culture and leadership of the DEA and other investigative agencies. Leonhardt told the panel there was no evidence that sensitive information had been leaked, but also acknowledged that it was absolutely possible that information could have been compromised. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A local man treats his girlfriend to a sumptuous 20-second massage, and an area desk doesn't mind if people sit on it like a chair every once in a while. This is The Onion Week in Review. Following months of anticipation and global fanfare, the royal baby was finally born this week. Sources close to the royal family say the newborn prince spent his first days crawling around Buckingham Palace, eating his first meal, and even speaking his first words. The Onion has obtained this exclusive audio clip. <laughs> In other news, a man's annual six-sentence conversation with his cousin goes smoothly, a generous improv troupe performs for free, and a pool owner has a bathing suit that touched his penis you can borrow. This is the Onion News Network. You can join us here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live, and you may call in and talk about anything you'd like to discuss. Our toll-free number again, 855-450-FREE. Skype us at Skype username lrn.fm. With you in studio tonight, you've got Ian. Cantwell. And Mark. That's Chris from ChristopherCantwell.com. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. We've got David in Mississippi via Skype. Hello, David. Hey, guys. How you doing? What's on your mind tonight? Uh, well, uh, I was really want to talk about incrementalism, but uh, generally the, the button pushing has to do with incrementalism, or my opinion on it. Now, just to bring our listeners up to speed, this conversation has come up again, and I don't know if yeah. it's come up on a show with the three of us on it before. I know uh, you and I have had the discussion, Cantwell. I'm not sure if Mark has been here for them. I think has he? We, we, I've been we, here. Yeah. I've had these discussions certainly with Cantwell. Okay. Well, it's about pushing the button to eliminate the state, and right when we left uh, for the last break— there was more of a discussion about, well, what are the parameters on that? Mark, you were asking Chris some questions about what does it actually mean uh, to push that button. And we can maybe dig in further if necessary. But, David, where did you want to go with the, the 
the discussion here. Well, my my whole point was the, the bringing up the button was that it's it's not a safe route to liberty. Uh, Who cares? All, all that's going to happen when uh, you end the state is that uh, a bunch of say where I live here in Mississippi, a bunch of yahoos are going to uh, grab their crucifix and their rifle and they're going to start rounding up gay people and slaughtering them. Not the gay center. people have rifles. As but well. most of them don't, unless they're code pink. Anyway, that's besides. That's the not point. my code problem. Code pink is not exactly big on gun ownership, by the way. Yeah. Look, <laughs> this is the... this is your problem, Ian. Your problem is is that you are willing to sacrifice anything in the um, in the I don't form know of if human noticed, lives. But it's to get what not. You want. Sorry, I'm sorry. I don't know if you've noticed, but it's not safe to have government around. He just said it wouldn't right. be safe to press the button to end the state. Yeah. Uh, hello, governments are responsible for murdering millions of individuals in just the last hundred years agree alone. With you. Ian, I completely agree with you there. Government is the most terrible evil to ever have come into existence. The problem is, is that you have to abolish government incrementally. You cannot just snap your fingers. Well, I know what you can't it. do because I live in this reality, right? And it's pretty right, apparent but, but even, that none of us will be able to snap our fingers and get rid of the government. But the idea, the question here is that if you could end the greatest evil the world has ever known <laughs> I by disagree. pressing a button, you just said you wouldn't do it because you think someone would get hurt? Well, I disagree I, I that wanna, government I'm is the gonna, greatest evil. I, you know, if, uh, if I have cancer tomorrow and I go to one doctor and he's like, well, I'm going to take a little piece out today and then I'll open you up and take a little piece out tomorrow, and then I'll take a little piece out the day after that. I get really frustrated with that guy, and I go seek a second opinion, and he's like, no, let's get that piece of garbage out of there. The incrementalism is more like chemotherapy in that it takes time. Well, and I've if, heard it's if awful. Win if over chemotherapy, hearts and minds. It, look, chemotherapy might be a situation where you know you've got uh, I don't know prostate cancer or something. You got some organ that you can't uh, you know uh, fundamentally separate the uh, from the, the the tumor from right, or some organ that can't be removed or something to that effect. But uh, generally speaking, if you can either take some like poisonous chemical that's going to make you lose your hair and be sick all the time, or you can have surgery and the thing gets removed on the spot and you don't have to deal with it anymore. The surgery tends to be a preferable thing. Now, I understand I've had family members with cancer before. Sometimes tumors are inoperable, yada, yada, yada. But I think that what you're kind of saying there then is that the that the government is sort of fused with us as a species. And I totally disagree with that. That's like the we are the government type of uh, fallacy that keeps this, uh, this institution in existence. Look, I don't care what the button does, whether it eliminates all of the people who are in the state today or if it just eliminates the idea of the state uh, from their minds, I think either one of those situations is acceptable, and whatever the consequences are from it, are they pale in comparison to the consequences of continuing with government for what might be hundreds of more years. I don't know how long this terrible, decrepit, violent, uh, inhumane idea will continue to exist with us, but if I had that opportunity, I absolutely would press that button. It's the only humane thing to do. So the idea of the state, uh, the purpose of the state is to control. add order uh, to lives that to would extract be otherwise wealth and to control to add, to add Deal order. Murder and okay. What are you talking the about? The vast Mark? majority of people In do not advocate for the misery. state because they like being stolen from. Yes, they Stop do. adding, they acting it. like this is the case. People don't say, you know what? I love, I love being stolen from no. and being threatened. They, they don't they love say that. Watching their team play on MSNBC because they are morons. They have no concept. You can't let them have this thing. You have to take it away from them. <laughs> They're you not. Have, we just, we just got done talking Atlantean about stupid Empire, people man. voting. They don't get. It. You give people the option to be irresponsible, and they will take it. David, go ahead. You you, ha you would have the Holy Atlantean Empire in the southeast. You would have like a, a recreation of the Holy Roman Empire. It's absurd. Except for it would be uh, Southern Baptists instead of Catholics. That's crazy. It's not my problem. You just try to imagine people putting together the monstrosity that you have today from scratch. From scratch. Yeah, they it's do it ridiculous. That you take the modern environment, right? Like the, the state goes away. I know Al Gore might disagree with me, but the internet doesn't go with it, okay? And so the state goes away, and now people are having this conversation of, oh, 
okay, well, I want to have a state. And there are other people who are saying, I don't want to have a state. Right. And then the people who are saying, I want to have a state, they're like, all right, let's just go ignore those anarchists. We're going to have ourselves a government. Now let's okay, figure out how the government's going to function. Hang on a second. Is. Hang on a second. So they're going to say, okay, let's form a government. Now you've got 320 million people with real-time access to communications all trying to say what they think the government should be and what its It'll geographical boundaries should be. None, it's yeah. so ridiculously complex that you'd never get away with it. People are so fed up with the government as it stands that they want to have a constitutional convention. We've got, I think, 32 states already signed on to do this thing, and you're and, and you're, you're you're in a position where people are getting ready to uh, 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 alter or abolish the constitution as it stands because they understand that this fundamentally does not work. So when people are getting together and trying to put this thing together from scratch, and everyone and 320 million people is putting in their two cents on it, it's going to be impossible to put the thing together. Yeah, it'll be wonderful. I mean, if that could actually happen, boy, wouldn't that be just a wonderful morning to celebrate when you could so. finally wake up and press that button? The, the, the then, question of the question of the button is fundamentally so a question of if you think the government has any legitimate purpose, right? If you think that the government can't be abolished in the in the push of a button, then what you're really saying is that the government actually has some kind of role to play here because it's going to keep all these other people in line. I don't need a government to keep those people in line. Unfortunately, right, a lot the of people have already that. been disarmed, well, but. Wait, wait, wait. I, I think it's important to point this out. It's not the government that keeps people in order. That's the illusion they want you to believe. Uh, first of all, if you look at the numbers of police to average people, they pale in comparison. There's it, like I think the national average is 500 regular people to one every one cop. So we far outnumber uh, these government agents. People obey because they're afraid. They know that there are these consequences and all that. But ultimately, you push the button, you make that go away. There's no legitimacy whatsoever to anything that remains. And we've seen that in a situation with no government, after Hurricane Katrina, for instance, the reason why there is peace and order in cities is because of average people. It was once the shop owners left, once the people in their homes had been disarmed, once people no longer were able to defend themselves in their property, that's when the looting began. That's when things started going crazy. It was when the government demanded that people leave, and of course people being generally good, they did as they were told, uh, but it's when the people are around is when things are calm. It's when things are generally okay. People get along. They you know, they, uh, they respect each other's rights to, to a large extent it's average people that keep order not the armed men with the guns we, we, we have the, no well hold on i'm okay. sorry the anarchist contention here needs to settle down for a second if a lack of stability is so grand why are places like somalia and honduras what are you talking about lack of stability why are you suggesting again that the lack of a state is a lack of stability thank you david what has, for your what has given the united states this uh, the most productive piece of ground that we have out there. What has given it its uh, it, its edge over the other places in the uh, world? Relative the, the freedom fact, compared the, the, to the, other the places. The fact yes. that the government stayed out of the economy for as long as it did. Yeah. Relative freedom, a respect of property rights, and mm. a a certain level of the rule of law. Right, like there's a certain these ideas. I don't know if I believe that uh, the rule of law you, really helped anything at all. You probably, can't. You can It probably hindered our economic at progress. At this point, the respect of property rights tends to operate under the law. Okay, like you're not getting oh. your property rights respected because people just are like, oh, this is really awesome, this whole idea. Government stuff. laws are the ultimate violators of property rights. Property not, rights I'm are not respected. Excuse with me, that. Mark. Property rights are respected because people are raised to believe that way. They are taught that Wrong. here. In, yes, they are. To, that's they are not raised yours. to believe that. You way. don't get to take that from her. It's on the grade school pra uh, playground They're where you learn this stuff. They're raised that way everywhere. There's more coming up here in moments. It's yeah, but you're more allowed to exercise it here in a lot of places. Hi, Ron Paul here. Today, I have an urgent message for every American who's retired or thinking about retiring soon. You see, our own government's disastrous policies have now put you, me, and everyone over the age of 50 at great risk. Sometime in the near future, we're going to have yet another financial crisis. This one won't be solved with bailouts, and it will hit seniors the hardest. I fear there will be civil unrest, a drop in stock prices, pension fund collapses, big changes to Social Security and Medicare. The erosion of personal liberties, bank and brokerage closings, and ultimately a major crisis as the U.S. dollar is rejected for almost any non-paper alternative. Don't let this happen to your retirement. Dr. Ron Paul strongly believes when the next crisis hits, there will be no warning and the government won't save you. 
Go online to www.ronpaulwarning10.com where you'll learn simple steps you can take to protect your retirement. Go to www.ronpaulwarning10.com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Cantwell, congratulations tonight on unveiling Mark's true status <laughs> tendencies uh, as just the mere discussion of a fantasy button has gotten him to come out and make ridiculous statements like the state provides stability and that uh, we need the state around to keep people in line. Sounds kind of scary to me. That's my interpretation. I, I of would what say that said. that's an accurate interpretation, but I don't yeah. think I said it. That I think that a state provides stability. Yeah. So that is an accurate interpretation. Yeah, it's an accurate interpretation. I just didn't say it. Okay, that, that's what I was getting from you during the last segment. Uh, so if you want to share your thoughts here, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I think it's pretty clear that the state creates instability. And there's, and I'm not just well, talking about— I wouldn't disagree with that entirely I'm either. not just talking about in the Middle East or anything like that. I mean all over the place, everywhere around the world, wherever the state is, there's instability because it is nothing more than a large criminal gang. The business cycles uh, alone. <laughs> just the, yeah. So we'll get to continue into that discussion here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. 
if you're online, you need to look at Pro XPN because the state's trying to screw up your internet connection too and you know make that as unstable as possible and then force you to pay even more money to them for the so-called service. Well, right now, they're probably trying to, uh, through your internet service provider, gain access to your information about what you're doing. Your ISP is likely logging all of the sites you visit and the search terms you enter. And you know what? Most of them are going to just hand it right over to the state when they come a-knocking. So you can stop that from happening by starting with ProXPN. You go to ProXPN.com slash FTL, download their software. It's free. Uh, for Windows, Mac, iOS devices, Android, as well as Linux, you just download that, get it installed, get connected, and you are protected from online spying and prying in a lot of ways. Plus, with their premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites, as well as uh, ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all. It's a global virtual private network, and it works well. Uh, works well. I was just using it, uh, I think, yesterday. ProXPN.com slash FTL. That's ProXPN.com slash FTL. Promo code FTL50 gets you 50% off for the lifetime of the annual account. That's promo code FTL50 at ProXPN.com slash FTL. It's a great discount on privacy. That is priceless. As we continue here, we keep talking about the uh, the button. I'd like to like. talk about the button. I, so, I, I, well, there's Alzheimer's sex, too, which is always a Yeah, hot I definitely topic. want to talk about that because that's totally hot. Let's go to Doug first, though, in Chicago. Totally You're on Free Talk hot. Live. Hello, what Doug. What did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm kidding. I can remember being a little boy, and my grandma and grandpa were, were remodeling their home and repainting it, and they were painting it white trim with orange, and they were taking out the picture window and putting in a bay window. And a couple people down the block came up to him, and I, and I can clearly remember it. They told him that they didn't agree with the color that, that, that they picked out and that they were bringing the property value down in the neighborhood and what they were doing. And my grandfather told him, you know what, I bought and paid for the property. Get the hell off my driveway. And Cantwell, you kind of took me back with a remark about a week ago when you were doing a report about a gentleman in California where he let the lawn grow too high and they put him in jail for it. And you were talking about how you agreed with the law to maintain property value, but that you thought that it should be a deed between the property owner and the neighborhood. Yeah, just to and clarify me, real quick, I didn't agree with the law that was being exercised. I, I said I could understand how people within a community might want to have a certain agreement, you know, though, yeah. Right, but but that can be the whole – I mean, I'm not claiming that you, that, that you think like the majority of people, but you have a lot of people out there who think that they're entitled – to not have their property go down and that their neighbor should have their liberty diminished for the fact that they don't want their property devalued. By Screw the way, them. the number one thing right. By the way, the number one issue for your for maintaining your property value, if you talk to any realtor, it can be the interior. Meaning that if you have your neighbor down the block remodel their kitchen in pink and take out a vital wall and make it all weird looking, well, they've re, you know, they've diminished your property value now. And you have nobody advocating that, you know, you should get approval for your kitchen or your living room. Oh, yeah, you there's do. plenty of you're bureaucrats. Right. You just head on over to uh, Longboat Key, Florida, and you will find that you need a permit for everything. Internal cha renovations well, and everything, yeah. Wow, well, well, I will not be moving down there. <laughs> yeah, there's I know. a lot I, I like of places freedom. like that. Yeah. There are plenty the of government with property value is is the claim is, you know like um if some people will claim that uh, if you have kids walking to the school bus, kids walking through the neighborhood that it lowers the property value. That black guy that just wandered through, he lowered our property value. Property value is so right. subjective that you can't even you can't even pin it on anything. Busybody neighbors right. lower property value in my opinion. Right, right, but shifting shifting the authority from the government, which I'm all in favor of, but over to like the community, which are like mob rule, I'm not in favor of that at all either. I mean, I think I'm all for individual freedom and liberty. You know, well, I mean? uh, the but government is mob rule. I don't know if you missed that. Yeah, point. so I, you know, understand something. So I don't even think that you know you should have a situation where everybody on your street should have a say in what somebody does to somebody's house. But if people, there are there are enough people in us in the world who care about their neighbor's house because they're concerned it'll bring down their property values or they just find it aesthetically unpleasing or whatever. Those people, in my opinion, should uh, you know, uh, enter into communities where they have contracts with their neighbors. And that is the way that uh, you can... D d d there's a market demand, obviously, for people oh, to, yeah. to, uh, to control what other people do with at least the exteriors of their homes. So Neighborhood Nazis are a that. big thing. 
and they and they should and if those people want to live in a society like that they can do that through contracts was really my only premise uh, uh you know i don't even think that uh you know 10 out of if nine out of 10 people on your street say that you have to change your house i don't believe that they should be able to override your property rights but you might enter into an agreement with people at which point you're bound to the terms of the agreement is all right. If you if you enter into a contract with ten of your neighbors that says we'll all have our houses beige, and then you decide, you know what, I'd like a little orange trim on my beige, then you violated the contract. That's all he's saying. But 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 here can be the issue, the other issue, and I'll and I'll get and I'll get off the phone here. You know, I don't have a problem with a property owner buying a home and being like, okay, I'm entering into an HOA, knowing full well. But you have people that. Buy into a home, and then later on you have the neighborhood make the call, well, we want an HOA or we want a tougher law on everybody, and you have the majority vote on it, and then you have to deal with it. Absolutely. I mean, I don't agree with it. And I think that that's fundamentally unjust, and I don't disagree with you in the slightest, sir. Totally. Thanks, Doug, for the call. Toll-free number 855-450-FREE. James is in Kalamazoo, Michigan. James, you're on Free Talk Live. Well, hello. Hey, go Uh, ahead. First off, uh, thanks for taking my call. It's our pleasure. It's Um, what we do here. Go for it. And uh, b- before I actually uh, get to what, what I wanted to talk about, I've been uh, tossing around the idea of uh, joining the Free State uh, Project, and I finally made the decision today that I am going to join. Wow, congratulations. And uh, when are you planning on making the move out here to New Hampshire? Honestly, whenever I can save up enough money to, to go. That's I'm, a fair uh, answer. I'm ready to <laughs> Uh, I'm ready to get on out of here. I'm hoping uh, within the next year to year and a half. Great. Oh, that'll be here before you know it. Uh, I, you know, as much as I like to recommend people come out to the Porcupine Freedom Festival, if you've already made up your mind that you're going to move, I would say save your money and you know don't go uh, to Pork Fest and then just you know keep socking it away. That way you can make the move sooner rather than later. New Hampshire is a nice place to visit, but it costs money. That's money you could have been using to make the move. Good advice. Uh, so that's my suggestion. And James, I know you were getting to another point, so. Stay Stand by. We'll bring you back for that. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. Uh, whether you want to join the Free State Project or not, New Hampshire is a great destination. You can also check out the Shire Society at shiresociety.com. But I'm a Free State Project participant. Freestateproject.org is great stuff. It's Free Talk Live. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. Physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. 
freetalklive.fm. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You can't win if you don't enter, and you actually can improve your chances of winning a prize drawing if you wrinkle up your entry blank. I'm Holland Cook from SurvivalSpeech.com, and I speak from experience. Why this works? If they'll be spinning the drum before drawing, your entry blank will move around more than, and not adhere to, other perfectly flat entry blanks. And if they don't spin the drum and merely reach into a box full of other perfectly flat entry blanks, many of which are sticking together, yours will feel different to the person reaching in. When you win, act surprised. And if you're looking for work, this is a metaphor. For more tips on sticking out in a world where just too much blends into the blah, 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 hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. We'll talk to you about whatever's on your mind. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us via Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. Battery power. It's more important now than it's ever been, and there are some good batteries out there. There's been a breakthrough in portable power technology called the Pocket Power Plus. It's a source of backup power so small you can put it in your pocket. You can also carry it in whatever's convenient. We've got, uh, you know, your glove box in the car, maybe your purse or briefcase. You're going to want to have this thing with you because you know if you've had a smartphone a smartphone for more than a day, you know that thing is dead sometimes halfway through the day, if not halfway dead, you know, before the morning's over. And so it's good to have power on hand, and the Pocket Power Plus can run your electronic devices for hours and even days if necessary. It comes with a full accessory pack with most of the adapters you'll need, including jumper cables, because this thing in some circumstances can actually jumpstart a car. Free Talk Live listeners, that's you, can now get Pocket Power Plus for half price by going to PocketPowerPlus9.com. That's Pocket Power Plus. 9.com. You can use coupon code FTL. You'll save even more. Pocket Power Plus 9.com. James is back with us in Kalamazoo, Michigan. James, you just made the announcement. You're planning on, uh, you have joined the Free State Project at freestateproject.org. You plan to move to New Hampshire within the next couple of years as soon as you can save up enough to make that move. And I think that's a, a smart t- decision. Uh, saving is important. It's important to have savings when you make a move like that. This is a big decision for somebody to make and i think that it shouldn't be taken lightly and it doesn't sound like you are taking it lightly there have been some people who've just sort of moved up on a whim and a lot of times that doesn't work out for uh very well they live their life on a whim yeah right so uh good to hear you're planning it uh but what else were you calling about tonight james go ahead well um you know i was uh browsing uh youtube looking for some kind of uh liberty oriented videos and i came across something that um about Rand Paul that I found a, a little disturbing. Now, I, I know that, that the three of you don't tend to participate in national politics, but I figured maybe I'd get out what I learned. Okay. Now, uh, th- this, is by, this is by no means like um, gospel. It's by no means like – it's not like I confirmed it, but um, the title of the video was Why Rand Paul is Not a Libertarian. And I'm like, oh, I have to check this out. And um, it, it listed some things on there, such as um, apparently he flip-flops on the issue of same-sex marriage. Um, you know, one day he says, leave it up to the states. The next day he's like, no, I'm not for it. Um, well, now, wait. Just yeah, I don't clear. think that that's a non-libertarian uh, stance. He, 
Okay, so Rand Paul's official, from what I understand, position on this is that he doesn't like it personally and wouldn't necessarily oppose the states from uh, from regulating it, but uh, he's against the uh, the federal government regulating it, as I understand it. Now, that to me is not a libertarian position because you have to be a libertarian all along the way. It's a better position than a lot of people have in that they want the state at the federal level to control these things, but it's still not exciting to a true libertarian. Well, a libertarian can take a couple of positions. They could say that there should be equal protection under the law, so therefore gays should be able to marry, or they could take the position that nobody should be able to, uh, the, the government shouldn't be issuing marriage license. He hasn't so, taken I, either of those positions. I understand. I'm just saying that uh, we, the, the caller is suggesting that gay marriage is somehow a libertarian issue, and I'm pointing out that it is not necessarily a libertarian issue. I don't think that you were suggesting that, James, but uh, go ahead with your okay, thoughts. Okay, well, let me make it, let me clear it up for everybody else. Um, the So, a libertarian could say that marriage licenses should not be issued by the state, so therefore, I do not advocate for further uh, inclusion of people into marriage licenses. That, uh, that way, I would be included in that particular thing. There you go. They could well, say that, um, but Rand Paul's not a libertarian, so he didn't say either of those things. And he doesn't things. really claim to be either, by the way. That's right. He, in fact, has said specifically he's not a libertarian. He's probably said that he is a libertarian, oh, okay. too. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, I've, I, I, I've heard it both ways, but the, the thing that shocked me most, and, and this uh, uh, video maker went through a list of, of different things, but the thing that shocked me the most is apparently um, that, that, and he uh, apparently uh, proposed an increase in military spending. Um, but did. the biggest one that... Uh, the biggest one that got me is apparently he's for the detention um, and or uh, deportation of anybody who views uh, or listens to something that might be considered radical. What? Well, I, 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 that sounds to be to like me. a stretch. OK, so so Rand Paul, uh, he's a guy who's sort of mastered this art of political doublespeak, and it's difficult to get him nailed down on any particular position. I don't That's know. That's reason that enough not to support him. Right. But the uh, the, the, the I, I haven't heard that anybody who listens to anything deemed as radical should be, you know, indefinitely detained without a trial. But yeah, he like doesn't have a source. problem with the so with the idea of indefinite detention without a trial for someone who is deemed to be an enemy combatant. And and the Whoa, thing is, enemy scary. combatant can sort of be uh, construed very broadly. Uh, he had uh, taken issue, for example, when there was the issue of uh, he had that filibuster on the Senate floor about uh, drone strikes, right? And he wasn't opposed to the president uh, using drones to kill American citizens in foreign countries. He wasn't uh, opposed to the Amer the president using drones to kill foreign citizens inside the boundaries of the United States. It was a very narrow opposition to didn't the he president. Also, didn't he also support uh, using a drone to shoot down a guy who was robbing a convenience store in the United States? Yeah, but not the president having the authority to do that he said the police can sort of kill a guy who yeah. uh leaves a a liquor store with 50 dollars and a gun uh so i mean it's it's the the statement that you're making that anybody who's listened to anything radical i i haven't heard that one and i think i would have the other ones i'd heard um i questioned the third one i, I would like to hear more about it the citation perhaps did the video suggest what the citations were uh, he he didn't uh, actually, but um, sort of an the, important the, thing to look for when well, you get in political information yeah, on the internet. All that said, there's well, a lot of good stuff out there. I mean, to to, to read about if you want to learn the, more about there Rand might Paul. Be, there might be in the description. I mean, the the gentleman seems like he did his research. Um, he just went on a rant about that one. Well, um, but it, it, literally, you're a better if, presenter if you can seem like you've done your research. We do that all the time here on yeah, Free right. Talk Live. You know, I really don't the, know what the, the hell point. we're talking about. He 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 is a guy who will say that the enemy is radical Islam, and that is like a totally broad statement. That you know, when you're talking about waging a war yeah. against an idea like that, I mean, it's so dangerous. It can go in any number of different directions. James, thanks for your call. Appreciate it. Till free number here 855 450 free dugs in manchester new hampshire you're on free talk live hey doug hey how's it going good go ahead sir yeah so first of all Rand paul's awesome why is that the only way we're gonna get an undercover libertarian you're gonna get who an undercover libertarian <laughs> you mean yeah. a liar well, I, I think well, that he he's gonna be vague and the only way he's gonna get our vote is if he wins. The only way he's gonna get Politics nominated is a, is a is language of lies. Goes with it. 
politics is a language of massaging the truth. If you're going to enter into politics and you speak the truth, you're never going to get anywhere because you're not speaking the language of politics. It's not ridiculous. It's true. There are people who have gotten elected here in New Hampshire yes. who are very, very blunt and Representing 3,500 the people. Say. So, yeah. no, that's not true. Mark, you're just making excuses for politicians now. Boy, it's batting a thousand tonight. Well, Ron Paul uh, d- did his very best to do that. He failed. Twice. No, he didn't. He was elected a dozen times. All right, yeah. Let the the, the call her. Yeah. Anyway, Rand Paul's got a good chance if he keeps going that way. Agreed. Doubtful. Okay. Well... (laughs) You can't make him happy. Like, Rand Paul doesn't talk the way he wants him to talk, so he'll never support him. No, he just said he has a good chance. I said it's doubtful he has a good chance. He can't because of Ted Cruz, okay? This is the thing. If he was in there and Ted Cruz wasn't in the race, then maybe Rand Paul would stand some chance of doing something. Who the hell's Ted Cruz? Ted Cruz is going to get the the conservative support and the religious zealots on his side. He's going to split votes with Rand, and some Democrat in a red tie is going to win the Republican primary. Is that Bush? Is that Jeb Bush? Is he wearing a red tie? Ted Cruz is going to be caught with his hand down somebody's pants. Hold on, on. Doug. I know you were going somewhere with this, unless it was just pure Rand Paul fellatio. (laughs) Stand by. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I don't consider liars to be awesome people. 855-450 free. This is Free Talk Live. When we needed $5,000 for a medical emergency, a friend told us about Avant. They use their own risk evaluation software to calculate a personalized interest rate, one that works for us. The whole process took minutes and didn't affect our credit score. We've helped over 100,000 Americans get the money they need fast. And with Avant, you'll never pay hidden fees or be penalized for paying off your loan early. Right now, Avant will also give you a $50 Amazon.com gift card after your first installment is made on time. To check your rates risk-free and get this special offer, go to AvantOffer.com today and enter promo code 200 at checkout. That's www.avantoffer.com, promo code 200. Again, that's www.avantoffer.com, promo code 200. Loans are made by WebBank and by affiliates of Avant Incorporated. California loans offered by Avant will be made under financial lender's license number 603-K124. Amazon is not a sponsor of this promotion. Other restrictions apply. See website for details. If you constantly feel run down and tired, your pH level might be low and your body could be full of toxins. If what you drink is not at a pH level of 8 or higher, you are inviting bacteria and acid to thrive in your body. But there is something you can do. Simply add 10 drops of AlkaVision Plasma pH drops to your water to help your body rid itself of acidic waste, increase oxygen, and raise your pH balance to optimum levels. AlkaVision Plasma pH drops combine a unique formula of the most alkaline minerals in the world. Alkalizing the water you drink, ridding your body of acidic waste and toxins, and helping you regain energy and vibrant health. And studies show viruses, bacteria, and toxins cannot survive in an alkaline, high pH environment. Order your bottle of AlkaVision Plasma pH drops at AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A Vision.com. Or call 269-409-1776. 269-409-1776. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com today. Free Talk Live. When there are cameras around, it doesn't make a difference. There were people with video cameras all over this event yesterday. That's and good. it looked like um, uh, these people were trying to get away. Yes, honestly. they were. Yes, they were. They were being these shot. People rushing towards the uh, cop phalanx. Nope. That's right. They were trying to get away. And those batons weren't rubber like the bullets were. They were either trying to get away or they were p- members of the news media trying to cover the event. Right. Police are supposed to be there to protect and serve. Be peace- Allegedly. Allegedly to be peace officers. And instead, they're creating war. And, of course, the uh, chief of police is claiming he'll investigate. What they're going to investigate, I don't know. It's going to be very difficult to identify the officers in this video footage because there were so many of them. Mm -hmm. There was an army of police officers out there, and every single one of them was participating in the attack on unarmed, innocent people. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. 
Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free and get on the radio in these remaining moments. There's just enough time. I don't know if we're going to get to that sex with uh, the wife with Alzheimer's story. but I, no, and, I'll have to work on it when I get home. I well, know. I am interested <laughs> uh, in hearing more about it because it was a story we originally had covered. So if we get the chance, we will sneak that in here. You can also join us 855-450-FREE, toll-free. Also, Skype at username lrn.fm. If you like Free Talk Live and you want to help support the show, please amp Free Talk Live. Go to amp.freetalklive.com. Get signed up there for 5 bucks a month, and you'll get perks like access to the amp-only call-in lines, the amp-only podcast forum, amp-only Facebook group, which is one of the best perks, in my opinion. And it's all there. Five bucks a month. We'll invest that five bucks into the show, get on more radio stations with it. We'll hopefully be announcing a couple of new stations within the next week or so. So looking forward to that. And it's all made possible by listeners like you getting behind the show as a Free Talk Live amplifier. So go to amp.freetalklive.com as we go back to Doug, who had a few things to say about Rand Paul. But uh, go ahead. I don't know if there was a larger point you were driving at. Go ahead, uh, Doug, with your thoughts. Yes, uh, anyway, Rand Paul has a chance, but I was talking about the uh, you press the button and get rid of government. If you do that today, tomorrow, another government's going to take its place, and the Bill of Rights will be null and void. That's the only thing keeping us somewhat safe, that's, is they still have to so, apply, so, so apply that law. We have, we have, every single time we bring this up, people say the exact same thing, we give the exact same refutation of it, nobody has a refutation of our refutation. And I'm just not surprised that a Rand Paul fan is saying this to me. But like, the, the, <laughs> the, but it, it, what Go I ahead, said Chris. before is if you have 320 million people with access to modern communications trying to have input on how you're going okay. to form the next government, do you think that's not going to be a bit of an obstacle? And number two, what on earth makes you think the Bill of Rights is doing anything for you now? <laughs> well, first of all, the only reason... The cops aren't getting out of control. There's some areas they have to. Uh, Sub- subscribe to copblock.org. I mean, what do you mean the cops aren't getting okay. out of control? They have, Well, in certain areas, like if you were just to get rid of the Bill of Rights, they would go house to house and say you can't have any more uh, They already have done that. They've gone states. house to house. They did it after yeah, Hurricane the federal Katrina. Courts are backing, federal courts are backing us up simply because of that piece of paper. People would riot if they said it's null and void now. Uh, it's, it's pretty it's clearly null and void. Accurate. I mean, just I mean, uh, April 19th, 2013, But Boston. you didn't address Doug Chris's first point about the fact what? that if you pre- press some magical button and got rid of all of the uh, auspices of the state, okay. someone trying to put— What do you think the mafia th- is? They're going to come in tomorrow and they're going to say, hey, you want to cross this bridge? You get a fucking pay. Oh, you oh, can't say I'm that on the radio. That's we probably let what they say, you, though. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't say the F word on the radio. I'm sorry about that. But uh, I understand where he was coming from. The, the suggestion here, Chris, is that get rid of the uh, government gang tomorrow and that the littler gangs will uh, step up in their place. I, I far prefer the littler gangs. At least those people don't have the legitimacy the police do. The police don't do anything different. They are highway, you know, committing highway robbery on a regular basis. But when you try to tell someone that who believes in government, 
they won't listen to you. Right. It's you not a cage when, when, when they the government use it. doesn't exist and the mafia steps in and I say, do away with the mafia, I don't have a whole bunch of people say to me, no, we have to incrementally get rid of the mafia. Right. They're willing to fight well, back. The mafia hadn't been in, in power at that point, so incrementalism wouldn't um, necessarily be uh, necessary. Uh, let me ask you this. The police provide any service at all? Um, Depending. What is it? What's that service? Well, they are the monopoly on uh, providing protection services, and every now and then they will go after an actual criminal. Do you think that protection services provide stability? Well, again, Mark, the government in general creates instability because it is a criminal gang. But if they were operating but does, as a criminal protection gang, service— well, that, that, that is not—you have not proven a point. The police how does who a lost criminal... their jobs as public police could get jobs tomorrow in a market environment right. protecting person and property. I didn't claim that they couldn't. Yeah. Um, I'm asking uh, asking some questions. You made you just made a claim. That claim is that uh, the government causes instability. That's how correct. How does it cause instability? Uh, by business dis- cycles. Well, it destroys people's lives. It doesn't through really threats. have much to do with police. They threaten people constantly. That makes yep. things very unstable. When you're trying to open a business, there's some government agent demanding money and extracting obedience from you. That's, that's unstable because you never know when some group. That's because they have a different understanding of property rights than you do. Yeah. Well, when somebody who comes around and uh, takes a crap on your front porch because they don't care about property rights, uh, whether they're a government agent or just some hippie, you'll they're, threaten they're them creating in order to get them. Right. You'll threaten threaten them in order to get them off of your property. It's proving the point that threats aren't going to go away when I you eliminate the state. I don't care about that, Mark. I know. Police I'm in only New York, making a point. Police in New York disarm the citizenry, and that creates massive amounts of crime, which yeah. I would say creates a lot of you're instability. Not making That's a only point. one state. Well, you're not there making are lots states, of places. Actually. Mark, you're not making a point against pressing the button at all. I am. No, you haven't made a, a salient point at I, all. Let's I go to Charlie listening in Kentucky. Mis- you're on Free Talk Live. The state doesn't do anything uh, that people have uh, consented to. Thank you. Go ahead, Charlie. I had a variation on the button, and I was thinking, uh, what if you could hit a button that restored everything to a constitutional sense? Oh, and we All thought the it. anarchy button was unrealistic. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't want to go back to slavery, man. I mean, I'm sorry. The Constitution had some good stuff in it, and it was a good try at trying to cre- create a better government, I guess. But uh, still, that's uh, still a government. It's still an agency of coercive force. You know, 13th Amendment's part of the Constitution, so going back to the Constitution as it stands would uh, would not reinstitute slavery. Oh, so you didn't mean the original Constitution. You just meant the uh, the current Constitution. No, yeah, constitutional government worldwide. They could never step outside of the bounds of the Constitution. How would you I mean, keep it from wouldn't... stepping outside the bounds of it's the Constitution? It's a magic button. It's a magic button. It yeah. is a magic okay. button. All right. If if I have to choose between no button at all and the magic button that makes the entire world constitutionally <laughs> limited and governments follow their own laws, that's a magic button that I would absolutely press. It's still be better than today. As long as we're making up magic buttons, I might as well get rid of the massive, violent institution that rules over the human race. That yeah, that button. That button now. is uh, rainbow colored and plays the hokey pokey when you push it. It is that crazy. Thanks, Charlie, for your call tonight. Let's go to James. He's in Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live. Hi, James. Oh, M&M. Huh? Minister Edge and Minister Freeman and the nut in between. <laughs> you... You're the peanut m M&M. and No, that be can't cope well. Uh-huh. All right. I, I, Mark, I believe animals have rights. That's why I would respect Chris if he were in my orbit. <laughs> Otherwise... I wouldn't object to anybody pulling out a Glock and emptying his skull of the blood and See, brains. You love to talk it. about people's death, and then you get all no, upset when I call no, you a raving not, lunatic, a psychopathic, homicidal I'm, nut. I'm, 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 Love to respond to all the crap you said on Free you Talk just, Live. You just—you don't have to respond to it. Any, you just within uh, 15 seconds were fantasizing about unloading a Glock into Chris Cantwell's skull. Someone you are unloaded. a lunatic. He wasn't saying he would do it. Yes, he was fantasizing about it. By the way, Mark, for the benefit of your listeners, uh, Kent Copewell fantasized about how it would be great that more cops would have Glocks emptied don't, in there. Don't pretend goals. that you do anything for the benefit of anyone. I've listened to you. I've Mark has read to me the text. This guy obsesses about us. He's like he's like sending us Skype messages. I'm so I'm glad he actually called in this time because to what he's been doing for the f- for months now is he sends Skype message after Skype message after Skype message throughout the show telling us how much he hates us while he listens to the program religiously. It's creepy, James. Right, I'm creepy. Just like James from Kalamazoo, chronic caller has never called that because he calls in your 
to wax you. But anyway, Bernard, speaking of pushing a button, if somebody would push a button in Keen to make you and all of your free Keeners disappear and all your free state project uh, sycophants disappear, where do we go? Loss would Keen be? And wouldn't it be a now nicer place? If of what loss to Keen would be if you were all to be pushed away by a button, literally, it would be actually be a better place. But anyway, Cantwell, you're the one that fantasized and celebrated two cops being murdered by a cold-blooded You know lunatic, what's fun about buttons? And then none of them- <laughs> I can push them, too. 855-453. free to abolish James Whittacon. <laughs> I love how this guy just uh, thinks that Keene would be better off. It's one of the most liberal places in the state, um, in one of the more liberal areas of the country. <laughs> and this guy, who's an avowed conservative, just thinks these liberals should be able to get their way at everything. <laughs> this just goes to show well, the twisted statist. logic. Well, he no, is. I mean, he's he's as much of a statist as any of the liberals in Keene. I mean, he loves the government, and so do a lot of the people around here in Keene. And I'm sure there are some people who would like to press a button and get rid of all of us. But sorry, yeah. there's more people coming here. That's why I don't like talking about these buttons, these imaginary buttons. <laughs> Just buttons. doesn't make any sense. All right. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I don't know where the hell we were going. Hey, the Alzheimer's thing. What the hell happened with that in like 20 seconds? Yeah, so real quick, there was a guy in Iowa who was a legislator there who was put on trial because his wife had Alzheimer's and was in a nursing home, and he was going in there and visiting her. I don't have her age handy, but he was like 78 years yeah. old. Sexy and, visits. And so they're go- he's going to visit his wife in the nursing home. They're having sex. He was charged with sexual assault. And he just went on trial and was just found not guilty, which I think by is a jury. great news. Yeah, by a jury. I think it's great news because uh, if from all accounts, his wife wanted to have sex with him. It was a comfort that he was providing to her, to her in uh, in this uh, home. Good. And, you know, I hope I'm getting laid when I'm that old. Check out Chris's new show this Friday still, 5 o'clock. Radical Agenda, 5 to 7 p.m. ChristopherCampbell.com and also FreeTalkLive.com. Visit us online. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait, no, now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. Aren't you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Well, stop using their money. There's an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. And by using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The latest episode of Cop Block Radio is next, after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, April 22nd, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.04 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,201 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $236. 
Antiwar.com reports the elected president in the post-revolution 2012 election and ousted just a year later in a military coup. Former Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi has been sentenced to 20 years in prison. Since the coup, Morsi's Freedom and Justice Party has been banned as a terrorist organization and the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood, its associated religious movement, has been sentenced to death multiple times. Human rights group Amnesty International was critical of yesterday's ruling, calling it a sham trial and a travesty of justice, demanding that Morsi be either retried or released. Lawyers for Morsi and his allies, however, say they feel like they got off easy with just 20 years and that they'd expect Morsi to be charged with incitement to murder and to have been sentenced to at least life in prison. The Obama administration, which has been reluctant to criticize the Egyptian coup, said they had reservations about the trial of Morsi, but that they will withdraw